in Tennessee and North Carolina, it's uh, some of them's lost their life. Biden, pray for Haiti, Afghanistan, and all those countries over there that's uh, messed up. And well, we're trying to get them out. And pray for guidance to our leaders, where we can free these people to come to another country. Be with this meeting tonight, Father. Give us wisdom, knowledge to do what's right and pleasing in your sight. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. This is a regular meeting of the Hendry County Board of County Commissioners being held on Tuesday, August 24th, 2021 at 5 p.m. in the County Commission Chambers in LaBelle, Florida. In attendance are Chairman Mitchell Wills, Vice Chair Emma Bird, Commissioner Daryl Harris, Commissioner Raymond Iglesias, Commissioner Carson Turner, County Administrator Jennifer Davis, County Attorney Mark Lapp, Deputy Clerk Anita Bichelle. Thank you, ma'am. As we get started tonight, if you're here tonight and you would like to speak, as we get through that portion of the agenda, there are speaker cards in the back. If you would fill those out, please bring them up to uh, the Madam Clerk. She'll make sure we get them, and we'll try to get you plugged into that portion of the agenda. So first thing on the agenda tonight is under bids 2021-23-Stay Road 29. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Burr. Is there any discussion on this? Is it just a movement to re-advertise and go back out? No action required. Okay. Um, we already got a motion in a second. You got action, brother. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> you carried. Bid number 2021-24. I make a motion, Mr. Chair, to approve the ship rehabilitative bids for seven homes to Clyde Johnson Contracting and Roofing and Cockhill Builders and Glaze Roofing. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Burge. Any further discussion on that? Not on this, Mr. Chair, but I would like to have an update from Ms. Sabrina Gaston whenever she has time mm -hmm. to educate us on what happened to the ones where we met in December. I think Superior got most of those, but I'd just like to get an update on where we stand with all of all of these projects. I don't need it now, Ms. Gaston. If you could just email it to all of us from a staff perspective, that would be amazing. I thank you, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Under consent tonight, we are pulling C1, D1, and E1. C1. Yes, sir. Charlie 1, David 1, Edward 1. Mr. Chair, I'd also like to ask to, prove, to pull, um, you said C1, I'd like to uh, pull um, C2, C3, and C4. So all of the C's, please. Okay, do we have a motion for the remaining ballots? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Byrd. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. C1. I just need to abstain from this. Anyone have any other discussion on that? Or for his affiliation with the marina. Sure. Do we need a motion on that? Oh, no, though, is it because the marina pays him to work in their direct derivative? Because it's going to Bass Angler Sports Society Nathan Youth Tournaments on Lake Okeechobee. Hosted at the marina, so it's an indirect benefit. Indirect, yes. okay. Because well, I just don't right. want it to appear as if it's a conflict, because I know you're not getting anything from it except a whole bunch of work. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll make a motion to approve item C1. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Opposed. Motion carries. C2, Commissioner. Um, the approval of the of the TD expenditures for GPS tourist data collection, credit card tracking. I went through the packet. I, I reviewed it. Um, I just like to know what are y'all's thoughts on when it says, you know, when it says center versus cluster. At the end of the day, we're spending a, you know, a good amount of money. What are we anticipating to get out of this? I'd love to hear it so that all of us are on the same page, understanding exactly what we're getting. Erin Hitzman, Tourism Development Coordinator, Hendry County. Um, so I've been researching different 
ways to collect data for our county. Uh, we've been approached by numerous different entities that have said, I want to build a business here, I want to bring a business here, I want to bring a recreation something to the county. They've talked to EDC and chambers and contacted me and different departments. Nobody has any data. So the only collection of data that we've had is really from fishing tournaments, uh, from the economic reports that that they give us of estimates and I mean they they pretty much know their numbers but those are the only solid numbers that we have um, so even looking at the festivals and the attendance at the festivals Swamp Cabbage Festival the way they've built attendance or got garnered attendance is aerial view person per square inch um, they have looked at trash and they have looked at um, what the vendors have sold and, and that type of thing sugar festival it's almost all anecdotal we have no idea. Yeah. It's free. We don't know. So Sugar Festival, their best guess is from porta potty usage from the porta potty vendors. That's so scientific. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, and the, <laughs> those are our two biggest festivals. We don't know who's coming. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know why they're coming. We don't know what their interests are. We don't know how to, uh, you know. So we don't know how many are in house, how many are out of county. What? So this can actually track. So there's mobile devices that everybody carries around. It's GPS data from your cell phone. Um, there's thousands of different apps, whether it's a gaming app or a weather app or a sports app, news app. All those cookies that you say yes to to read an article, this is how they're tracking it. So it's a big brother type of thing, yep. if you will. Um, but we all say yes to it to use these free services on our phones. Um, and so this can track coming into our county. We can create clusters and inside those clusters we can have 10 points of interest in each cluster those POIs points of interest can um, be whatever we want them to be so we can have a hotel point of interest we can have a recreation spaces nature spaces whatever that is it can be rodeo grounds it can be it can be anywhere anywhere that we decide they're called geofencing so we create a geofence around whatever these points of interest are and they and, can put them in one get, cluster together we get X number of clusters with this agreement yes sir right and then off of the clusters there's also I don't tendrils or I don't know how you explain it but drilling on that so let's say we put a cluster around let's say we put a cluster around the Hampton Inn in Clouston that's a point of interest that's a point of interest that's within a cluster of hotels okay so the cluster would be the hotel usage in in Cluster. Wherever we want it to be. Okay. It doesn't matter. We can name we can do the whole county as a point of interest and do Clewiston or we can do the whole county as a cluster and do Clewiston as a point of interest and LaBelle as a point of interest or I mean we can make it as big or broad or little as small as we want. So that's where that's where we can we create that. We decide. So so my brain went a couple different places on this and I couldn't necessarily decipher what was going on. It's ironic that you're also having the human traffic discussion as well. And so you know, I look at our hotels that are not as nice as the Best Western, uh, Roland Mars Marina, Hampton Inn, and the Holiday Inn Express. What are what are the Clouston Inn would probably be an upper tier, but other than that, am I missing one that really drives our economic numbers? We that's, don't know. That's kind of it, right? Okay, okay. So once again, I'm being anecdotal in my assessment of those. So you're telling me that with this program you feel confident that we can decipher between the hotel having a long-term human that we don't like per se living in there as a as a place where I mean they're just having low-income sure. housing versus the person that's coming in that's working as a contractor a United States Sugar Corporation for build out like we're seeing right now with the Hampton Inn just packed versus a fishing tournament are we going to be able to distinguish between those according to this company from the conversations I've had they can track per we're not going to have individuals we're not going to have names or people or anything yep. like that That's it'll all track out. per device okay what area code zip code they came from what area code they came zip code what zip code they came from what state what wherever they came from okay um, their home address that is tied to that device okay and so we're going to know where they came from and how long they stayed and it tracks if they have been within that cluster or point of interest with it at least 15 minutes meaning they're not sitting at a traffic light they came here and they're not a they're not a local area code or zip code they will be able to determine how long they came how much money they spent how long they stayed and we can track that so um, we can pinpoint it down at every day 
every week, every month, every for a year. We can do all kinds of reports, and we can do it per cluster. We can do it for competition. So if you want to look at Okeechobee versus here and see what they're doing with fishing tournaments or hotels or whatever it is, we can look at our competition, and we can get up to three different points of competition to look at. Okay, and that's that's within this same chart? Yes, sir. Okay. And we get three years of back data as well. So all these clusters and the points of interest within the clusters that we decide on, which we will collectively decide what those need to be to give us the best result, because it's a countywide tool. It's not just a tourism tool. I mean, it sounds like it's a regional tool that it, I, it, I didn't even grasp. Well, absolutely. Regional so we can, we can create regional, it to be yeah. what we want it to be. Um, and so within that dollar amount, there's a one-time fee that'll give us three years of historical data. So we will get three years of data. So the last year with COVID and the two years prior to that, plus everything up, up until this point, we'll be able to see the patterns and what has happened, and we'll be able to show that that tracking. Um, Can you opt out of last year since COVID wasn't a good year to base it on and just go back to three good years? We cannot, but COVID was not a bad year for us. Well, that's People true. came <laughs> here, that's and it's different. So, I mean, they weren't going to Disney. They were closed. They were coming to nature. So it'll actually be pretty interesting to see who came here and why and how those trends might change in the future because it's really, um, I think it has created a, a front of mind that people need to get out of, they want to get out of the city and they want to get into nature and they want to get back in touch to um, something that's not quite as crowded and populated and they're coming here for different reasons. They're doing staycations and that sort of thing. I just want to make sure that once we get that data and we have those analytics that, you know, we've spent 20 something thousand dollars on it, now what are we going to do with those analytics? How do we market with that? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say that this is gonna tell us we need to we need to encourage Brown Sugar to have a second festival. We need to encourage the Sugar Festival to have a second festival. We need to encourage Swamp Cabbage to have a second. You know, the the people that are driving those types of discussions, I think, are going to be big hitters. That'll be interesting to see. And then I think the fishing tournaments are going to be cash cows as well. But I think we're going to be shocked at the steady stream of contractors coming into our area uh, associated with the the U.S. Sugar facility and the work around Lake Okeechobee. Yes, sir. And then depending on how the A1 reservoir, you know, how expedited that comes, you know, you have an option of living in Fort Lauderdale or an option of living in Wellington, the acreage, something like that, or living in Coolston, because just quite frankly, a lot of contractors are not going to put their people up in Pahokee, Bell Glade, or South Bay. So... You know, and people can take that thing. I don't you want to call it racist or mean or whatever. I don't care. You know, I, I keep a lot of men on the road and I have to I have to take into consideration where they're sleeping at night and are they comfortable because they're away from mama or daddy and they don't want to be in a place where they're not. They don't have a good selection of eateries. They don't have the ability to, you know, sleep in a hotel that's nice. And so I was so tickled to see the Hampton Inn come online along with our, our current places but i can just imagine i mean i bet your contractors yeah I'll keep we, you guys afloat in the dead months absolutely yeah I mean, we, we don't i mean we have some fishing tournaments during the summertime but it's so hot out there even on our guide trips i mean i think i've got two guide trips this past week um versus 20 a day yeah. during the winter time so during the summer months you know i've got contractors that are at Oakalana, they're doing the work in Belglade at that Fin Rock. I've got yeah. uh, people at U.S. Sugar, and it's repetitive business and new business. And so we'll we'll be able to drill in on that a little bit more. Well, the other thing you'll be able to do it's called visitor intelligence. So we have, again, access to all your likes and dislikes and interests and the things that you click on. And when you search the internet for things to shop, or when you search for vacations to go certain places, or you like golfing, or you like fishing, or you like boating and birds, or any of those interests, you search certain hashtags, you search certain whatever. Um, it, it, it creates profiles for people, and it allows us to understand what age groups these people are, what their likes and dislikes are, why they came here, how they, I mean, they really get into the psychology of and give you kind of a layout of who these people are and why they're coming here. And then we can turn around once we have an understanding of who's coming here and why and when, because we'll be able to see seasons and season trends and what zip codes and what why people are coming here and when they come here, birds or whatever it is, things we may not know about. Um, and then we can turn around and target market to them through social media and different avenues like that. Well, I know this is something, you know, for the number of years I was the chair of the TDC, it was always, you know, we were trying to find the way to, to be able to assess those data points. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm glad. And it sounds to me as if y'all put a tremendous amount of thought into this. Uh, the one request I would have is that you, you I know you, you all have done a 
great job, in my opinion, of passing the information up to us as a board. And I'd love to see these data sets as well. You know, in, in what you all, where you all are leaning towards deciding what are your clusters or point of interest sure. and how that all plays out and then how we can help, you know, to, to look at and assess that data and where maybe, you know, we may have a different opinion of where your, your group kind of thinks just to make sure we're all in agreement on that. And that's a conversation we haven't had yet because we haven't, and the, the company can help us decide that and we can have a committee. It does, whatever you think is the best we can work together to make that it's just work. I think that's so. whatever y'all think is the sure. best, and then they just let us poke holes in it. Just yes, like sir. you did with the, the the ride share experience, you know, with our sure. Goodwills and all that stuff. I think I think that's the best way we can go about it. So the other aspect of this is is credit card tracking. Yes, ma'am. So it also gives us um, the intelligence of what people are spending and where they're spending it, so we can actually track that as well. So um, they have a contract with MasterCard, which is 34% of the credit cards, but they, through their algorithms, they can determine how many debit cards, other credit cards, and cash is being spent at all these places, which we currently don't know. We don't are not privy to hotel tax the way it's set up because we don't have the RISE agreement. And, you know, it's so this will give us an idea of actually who's going to hotels, where they're coming from, where they're staying, how much they're spending on in a, in a different way. So um, it'll give us information that we've been wanting and we can help shift and market appropriately to, you know, to in, in educate our businesses or work with EDC and bring new businesses in and give them this data to say. One other, one other point I'll make on this point. Before I do that, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve item C2, Mr. Chair. I'll second that. By Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Glacius. Got something else you want to say? The question I have are any of the surrounding counties using this now? Not that I'm aware of, none that I've spoken with, not the smaller counties. That they, there's a lot of um, other counties that are bigger uh, that are using products like this, but not the ones that I've spoken with. They work with a lot of different DMOs, um, destination man, um, marketing organizations, and they work with a lot of different TDCs. And I mean, they, these guys are not just Florida, they work with nationwide. Um, so they have a lot of experience doing this, and that's why they have over. They're actually international. They have over 200, I want to say it right. Is it 200 million? I, get, but I guess the reason I was asking that, I know, I'm sure a lot of the larger counties are. I was just curious if any of the smaller counties were actually engaging this and how, how was the performance, it was, what's it doing for them? Yeah. So just out of curiosity. Um, that's really nice a question. It's not a, I just was curious if, you know, not that I'm Highlands, aware. Glades, you know, DeSoto, anywhere around us like that. That's really nice. I know Glades is not, and I'm pretty certain that Okeechobee is not using this particular vendor. Correct. Um, the last point I was going to make towards this was just that uh, in, I think it was 2008, but the study may have been commenced in 09, but I can't remember exactly. It may have been 08, but the volume of, of cash sales and, and cash dealings that that side of Hendry County, at least, was the one that it was really drilled in on was absolutely frightening. And the reason why this happened was um, Collins Group, the think tank out of Tallahassee that was assigned to us from the Florida legislature to look at assessing our region. Uh, depending upon the U.S. sugar sale going through when the $1.74 billion acquisition was announced and, and you know, they were, they were going to essentially go away one day. Um, it, was, it was a sad figure because what it, what it proved was that we have a huge population that is essentially a ghost. And they're not, they're not here legally, but they are contributing a tremendous amount to our community but we don't really we don't really capitalize on them like we should because they deal in a cash world almost in its entirety, and um, you know this particular entity was able to access all ATMs in the region, and they compared us to like a Lehigh and a downtown Fort Myers and a Cape Coral, and they gave those numbers in really hard hard data, and it was it was frightening because you don't realize how many millions of dollars are turning, and I'm going to use millions of dollars are turning in a cash society. But then you start to understand why the Aztecas, the La Fronteras, you know, all of these right. different things are essentially exploding and why the La Bamba and, and you know, uh, uh, boss man's, you know, place out there in Hooker's Point gets modeled right down in Fats Plaza or whatever else, you know, in the city of Clifton as well, because that's actually what we're, I don't want to say catering to, but that's what we're attracting. And so now we need to have this tool to understand what are the other items that are being assessed and how are we going to attract the different demographics yes, because sir. you know at the end of the day you know do we want you know do we want to court the other population 
that is going to help build a tax base and, and then keep our other essential aspects of our community alive and well also. And so uh, We're able to, uh, apologies. Aaron, uh, on the clusters, yes, are sir. we limited to that? We are, if we choose this now, we're limited to six. If we wait because they've restructured their company, we will be limited to five um, for the same price. But it's 10 points of interest within a cluster. So well, that's we'll pretty good for this size. Absolutely. We also got the rodeo grounds in that, right? We can put whatever we want in it. I think it's going to bring a light to the human trafficking. Um, being in the school system, you see kids come in and, you know, you can't identify them because now they don't have to have birth certificates. They don't have to have paperwork. So that's going to be a, a big piece to see the overflow with that. So yes, ma'am. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I have a motion and a second. Already there. We just need a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Commissioner C3. Yes, um, on, on C3, I wanted to ask you, Ms. Hitzman, um, is, this, is, this the, is this an example of cart before the horse? Um, should this, I, I think this is a deputy, a Henry County deputy that's going to be teaching this, correct? Yes, sir. But how does that play with, I mean, and, and I see the sheriff back here, have we made, do you make an arrest for human trafficking? Do you, is that what happens? Is it an arrest for a trafficking or... How does that all play? I'd love to get educated a little bit, you Mr. Sheriff, because, you know, I don't, I think that we have human trafficking occurring in Hendry County. We're going to train people to do it, but yet, what is the, the tip of the spear, if you will, to how, how this gets uh, carried out? Well, first of all, I'm glad to see, and I'm very interested in seeing how this program works, because one of the most difficult things in the world to make an arrest on is human trafficking. Because typically victims do not want to cooperate. Uh, they're scared. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, human trafficking is, is we target it hard. We're working it hard. Uh, we're out in the public. We're doing awareness training every step of the way. Um, but if, even if you look at the bigger counties and you watch the news every night, how many times do you hear that human trafficking arrests were made? It's very rare. Um, so, but yes, we, like I said, we work it hard and I'm interested in see how this works as far as the data and, and all that goes. So, uh, Mr. Chair, so, um, mm. as a hotelier, I had to be certified by January 7th of this past year or face a $2,000 a day fine is what the state mandated. Um, I was the first one at the Marina to get mm -hmm. uh, certified and then my staff at the front counter and my housekeeping. So I actually had classes I administered in Spanish. They had videos. But what's an interesting thing is <clears throat> it's the education and the awareness of letting people realize what's going on. It's not just a white van down the street or a uh, container home, you know, or mm -hmm. a container out in Montour or Pioneer. It's the issue of someone checking into a hotel that um, doesn't have luggage. Uh, they don't want service. Um, uh, in most cases, a man speaks for the woman. Uh, I mean, it's just yeah. there's all kinds of factors in there, it, and they throw these red flags out. And when that happens, mm -hmm. at least in the marina, what we're supposed to do it, is it, my it, staff reaches out to me. Yeah. But it goes even to maintenance. Maintenance goes into work in a room. The idea is to just educate them so they don't walk into a room and they don't have blinders on. Well, what happens? Your staff reaches out to you. What do you do? I'm calling that guy right mm -hmm. there. Okay. Yeah. And I tell you, and do y'all investigate it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Have to investigate absolutely. a lot of these reports a month. Yeah, we do. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do. Uh, and I tell you, and, and in my opinion, I think you're going to see a lot more cases <clears throat> coming up, or or um, accusations of it. We get a lot of accusations of it, you know. And, and it, you know, we've had them in in restaurants before, uh, certain ethnic restaurants. Uh, you know, people come in and and they're real concerned about the employees there and you know, working for, for nothing and, and why. But I tell you my opinion, I think we're going to see a lot more cases come up uh, due to what's going on on the border. Just the fact there's the high volume. Yeah, because everyone is, you know, not everyone, but there's a high volume of them coming over that's, that owes these people for bringing them across and the cartels and whatnot. So I think we're going to see a lot of cases come up here in the near future. Those people get complacent because when they get in the workforce, then... It, you know, they hold that nugget over them. What are you going to do? You going to call the cops? <clears throat> no, you're going to do this. This is what you're going to get paid for, or, or you, we're going to feed you this. But you're going to work like a slave force. And I mean, mm -hmm. it just goes yeah. on and on. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was a bit 
ticked whenever I received the memo saying that we were going to get fined two thousand dollars a day, and we had to go through this. Is like, man, this is BS. I, I don't want to go through this. And then after I went through the course, it kind of opened your eyes. It kind of yeah. it's disappointing because the stats are high. It, it's 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 not just you know it's worldwide mm -hmm. of course, but the stats that we have in the United States and Florida <clears throat> just blow your mind. Yeah, Florida leads the nation, right? Sir, Florida leads the nation, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah. Um. So so Ms. Hitzman, you'll you you and the deputy for Henry County will be giving this. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Appreciate you, boss. Uh, y'all y'all will be giving this presentation. And do you do you uh, mandate that the hoteliers show up, or is it for restaurant? And what are your thoughts? What we discussed is that uh, Sergeant Hanley, she's the one that oversees the majority of the human trafficking training in the program she would be giving the classes we would invite all the hoteliers and any tourism partners that made sense to the the chambers and you know whoever just is really a, a tourism partner that we see would be beneficial to this um, hoteliers number one and we would do it in maybe potentially one day one in the morning, one in the evening, to allow different staff members to be able to come, since not everybody can come at the same time, um, and be able to offer refreshments to them. And that would be something that the, the TDC would, would help with, just to help with the, we're just offering it, and that Sergeant Hanley is doing the education. So it would just be hoping that they come, we invite them and to a central location and, and host this. Exactly what you So, I mean, the reality is I don't know how much participation you're going to get. I'll be honest with you. My staff is already trained. Uh, I, have to, I have to train new hires within a, I think it's a 20-day period, and I'll wait, and I haven't had any, but I'll wait till that 19th, 20th day just not to waste any time. That being said, you know, am I going to sacrifice my staff to go back through your program? And nothing against it, uh, Sheriff, but... My point is the state. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a joke of a fine. It was a two thousand dollar a day fine, not a hundred bucks, not fifty bucks. It was two thousand dollar a day. So I hope that all the hoteliers have abided by that program and done what they needed to do. Uh, because of COVID, we haven't had as many uh, state inspections. I haven't been inspected. They haven't required it as of yet. And here we are. You know, you know, heading into September. But that being said, um, it's a small amount of money. I'm supportive of it. I'm. I appreciate your efforts and what you guys are doing. I just hope you do have some participation. I just don't know how far it's going to go. Yes, sir. And you may want to even expand it. I mean, one thing that we weren't required for was the restaurants to get involved. And I think, you know, I think that might be somewhere you want to entertain. If the hoteliers are booked, just try to bring it into some, somewhere else in tourism. Because, listen, restaurants, day-to-day, -day, they're involved with tourism. Oh, absolutely, you know? 100%. And a lot of these guys are traveling people, so. And that's where we hadn't identified. We had to come up with some so The hotels were number one because they're the, the front of it. And obviously restaurants or any shops that might be more engaged in tourism, some of our museums, um, the chambers. So I, I think we had to set a budget to where we don't exceed that, you know, have a goal post because we don't know what it's going to look like right now. And if we don't get the interest from certain parties, we invite others. And I guess that's my only thing is I just don't know. I don't know how much participation you're going to have. So I'm not being negative. Nelson towards it. I'm just saying, I know you got to start somewhere, but, you know, obviously doing a morning and an afternoon session is going to be there, but I, I don't know if the carrot's big enough yet with just giving them refreshments and, and there's no mandate that they have to do that. I'm not saying the county needs to mandate a human trafficking certificate, but I would love to follow up to see, you know, what you had to go through. Does DBPR? Is DBPR? I would love to know. You know, can you? Obviously, that's probably a database that you can check to see have all of our hoteliers completed this. If they haven't, then by all means, we, we, you know, we need to follow up with them on that. Yes, sir. Um, but I don't think that this is an item that it is lightly. I've, I've shared an <coughs> anecdote before of, you know, I passed the van. I, it still keeps me up at night. I, I guarantee you, I witnessed it, and you know. That was that was one question I wanted to ask you, Sheriff. If it happens, if you see uh, what you think is human trafficking at I can't name the hotel, but one's right by uh, McGahey and Perez. What's the name of that hotel? Uh, yeah, but worse than that, go by the old Cuban market, the okay. old East West. Okay, yep. So you know what I'm talking about the old Cuban market on that side of town, but this side of my favorite restaurant, Sunrise. Sunrise. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You see something happen in there, but that's in the city of Clouston. Is that you have to call city of Clouston, and you guys have no jurisdiction over that? No, we have we have jurisdiction anywhere in the county, All right. regardless. But okay. uh, it's just up to whoever wants to work it. Got gotcha. you, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, boss. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve 
Item C3, the development of expenditures for Houston human, hosting human traffic awareness training. Back to Mr. Turner, second back to Mr. Bird. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. C4, Commissioner. Uh, Ms. Hitzman, th this one just made me scared. Uh, it looks to me like we're getting aggressive on wanting to give TDC money away. I want you to, I want you to counter that statement. Yes, sir. Okay, so when I started with the TDC and looked at what we had in place, we had a TDC matching marketing grant that was available um, that was put in place on how, with rules and regulations, <coughs> policies on how we can distribute our funds. Um, that wasn't how we were distributing our funds necessarily. So you're trying to bring it in compliance with what y'all are doing? Yes, You sir. want to make it be legal? Yes, sir. So I I'm agree. not going to advertise this. I this is if okay. people come to us and yep. say we would like support, we have programs in place to say this is what we can and cannot do. Got you. And it, it falls in alignment with what we have been doing. Makes, makes much more sense. I understand exactly what you're driving at. I was looking through the application process. So many times I've disagreed with some of the entities that we've given money to. You know, I know that was a, a, a constant critique of me as being chair, you know, no. Because we had this thing where if you came in and asked for 50, we'd give you 25. If you came in and asked for 5,000, we'd give you 2,500. When I said 50,000, when I said 50, I didn't mean 5,000. You know, you, 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 yeah. you, I mean, it, was, it was absurd. 30,000, no, we're not going to do that. But I'll tell you what, we'll give you 15K. And we did that all the time, and you should drive me crazy. So I just want to make sure that y'all are being sticklers over what you're giving out. I don't think we should be willy-nilly on anything. I love the fact that, that we kind of, you know, we have to talk about it a little bit more and vet it. Um, but um, I, I appreciate everything you just said on C4, so that makes complete sense to me. Y'all, you are bringing it into compliance, I think. So yes, that, sir. that sounds like a winner. Mr. Chair, I'm making a um, motion to approve item C4 on the new marketing and promotional grant funding. I'll programs. second that. Okay, motion by Mr. Turner, second by Commissioner Iglesias. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We are pulling, thank you, pulling D1 to come back at a later date, correct? Yes. Okay, so that brings us to E1. Mr. Lapp. This is a change uh, to what was in the packet. In the packet, it was a six-month extension on the license agreement. Uh, after I prepared this, AIA said they needed three months till November 29th. Um, November 29th because they're removing the trailers. So that's just a different to it. Second. Back to Mr. Harris, second back to Mr. Bird. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Nothing under awards and appearances tonight. Public hearings. First one is petition number VA21-0001. Mr. Chair, whose district is this in? Fine, isn't it? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve what's presented unless unless there's some, some strong objections here. No, I've, I know where it's located. And there, Staff, you, you guys are good with the, the recommendation that you have presented here, so. Yes. Yeah, so I make a motion to approve the recommendation for the variance of 15 feet, 15 feet I cannot speak tonight, uh, resulting in a rear yard setback of 10 feet for a pool and enclosure instead of the 15. Second. That's the gist. Yep. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. This is a hearing of the public. If anyone of the public would like to speak to this at this time, if you would, come forward. I do have one revision for it before I leave. Here's your motion. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it down. It's minor. All right. So the one revision in, in the, I can't talk. In Good. the executive summary, I referred to an ordinance and it's a resolution. So I, our recommendation is to approve the resolution, not as stated, the ordinance. Yes, ma'am. That's I, the only I, I don't think issue. I need to make an amendment. That's all just script. Okay. Yep. Again, anyone of the public like to speak to this? Further discussion on the board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. They're here. Enjoy your pool. Session B, number CPA 20-0006. Yes, good evening, commissioners. Uh, this agenda item is a uh, transmittal hearing uh, for the comp plan amendment, uh, CPA 20-006. It's an amendment uh, to the future land use element text and uh, the map of the comprehensive plan. This is for a property that's located on 
State Road 80, just at the county line. Um, this is um, associated with a rezone, but that's not the topic of tonight's um, discussion. Um, this, um, this, this project, the, the comp plan amendment, um, and the rezone were presented to the LPA, and the LPA recommended um, approval of the comp plan amendment and recommending that the board transmit the comprehensive plan amendment to the state. Uh, when it does come back from the state, uh, whether they have comments or not, then the next uh, hearing would be an adoption hearing for the comprehensive plan. And also at that same time, we would be uh, considering the rezoning to PUD for this project. Uh, just as a note, because I know that um, I've been asked by a couple of the commissioners, um, the rezoning, um, there were questions and issues with the LPA that we're working through with the applicant. And so you will see a different proposal when we come to um, that adoption hearing. Uh, and we're expecting that in October sometime. So I don't have anything to add at this point. If you have any questions for me, I'm well, available. When it comes back in October, it'll be exactly what they're going to do. Uh, for the rezoning, yes, sir. The comprehensive plan would okay. not change. Because when you cro come across 80 and look to the right, we don't want to see a bunch of dump trucks. Yes, sir. We will take a note of that and make sure we're addressing Buff it. Buffers will be in place. Buffers will be in Absolutely. Place. Buffers and the State Road 80 uh, overlay requirements that include architectural and landscaping um, and so um, all of that will be part of that um, proposal. Does this affect in any way Wheeler Road? Uh, it does not. Um, we do have a, a separate discussion uh, regarding uh, Wheeler Road that um, uh, includes a property that the applicant does own. And it is a, it's a positive um, um, effort that we're going through. And um, it does not negative. Is that the right way to say it? It's, it doesn't negatively affect the project itself. They might be able to donate some land to us. I think we're going to, not think, we will be working out um, the right of way um, in, in a um, positive way. It don't affect the towns of Canal either? It will not, sir. Any other questions? I'm just, uh, I'm wanting to know, you know, my, my concern is, is you look at what an RV park means to some people and what it means to others. You know, what I want to make sure that we, we know what we're in, implementing here. And then uh, I guess the same thing is also from, a, from an industrial use perspective on that, on that corridor, mm -hmm. you know, just making sure that that's going to be uh, appealing right. in nature. Yes. Um, <coughs> For clarification, um, I was told by the uh, applicant's representative that the industrial park aspect of it is going to be withdrawn, but that doesn't affect the comprehensive plan amendment. Because the comprehensive plan amendment is, is strictly for a map amendment to the mixed use development land use category, and then the text that would allow <coughs> RVs on this, only on this property within that future land use category. The proposed um, RV park, um, I guess, is somewhat of a misnomer. The intent, um, and I can let the applicant's agent you know, describe it further, but the intent um, is to be something like the river bend. And you, then, then my blood pressure lowers, and I look at, you know, I look at river bend as nothing but an asset. It is, sir, yes. And they, when they yes. filled our chambers, and when you look at what those people hammered us on, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, it was, it was all positive in nature. And so, you know, if that's what the applicant is trying to push, then by all means, yes. you know, let's get on the same page. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Sherry, it's your district, you said. What are your thoughts? Uh, speaking with Ms. Simmons this morning, it sounds like they've got all the, everything worked out that needs to be worked out. She said it's going positively, so I think it's a good project. to approve. I second the motion to approve okay. transmittal. 
Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. This is also a hearing of the public. Anyone in the public like to speak to this at this time? If you would, come forward. <clears throat> come up, state your name for the record, please. Uh, Catherine Ferrante. Um, I live basically directly behind this property. Um, I don't entirely object to it. I do have some concerns that I don't know if they've been addressed and or will be addressed and the, f the primary one is environmental. Um, there's been sightings of Florida Panther, both at C43, crossing Towns and Canal and going into the Orange Grove that's currently on this property. Um, there's caracaras, there's wood storks every year. Um, I have pictures and they, they, I don't know where they nest. I, I know the wood storks don't necessarily nest there, but the caracaras might. These are endangered species. Is there or is there a plan, has there been or will there be a plan to do an environmental study and make sure we're not disrupting too much of these creatures' habitat? And that's just to mention a couple. There's been a few more species that we've personally seen on this property. So have to do that, Mark? Well, usually in most developments, they, they do have an environmental study. Yes, ma'am, to see what impacts it's going to, what it's going to impact and how, how it is going to impact it. So but, but would someone like to answer that, Ms. Assemblage, or? She is just asking for clarification if there's going yes. to be in. There, there is an environmental impact study that was done for the property. And um, there was a notice that there's this is an area for you know certain uh, protected species, but uh, there weren't any sightings on site with when the um, um, survey was done, and uh, staff is uh, comfortable with the results of of the study. Real quick, may I ask when it was done? What time of year? I'm just curious. I don't have that. Because that can make a difference, you know. Can you get with her, Margaret? Like, phone number or something? Um, I'll look at that if you want to continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gary Ferrante, a resident of Hendry County. That's my wife. Um, just have one clarification I would like to, to ask. If you do the um, the land use map amendment and you allow option A and B or C, at what point do, does the uh, developer come back and say what they're going to do? I mean, if you allow all three, does that give them the option to do all three of those or some combination of all three of those at some point in the future? That in October? Excuse me. Mr. Chair. Great question, sir. I, I, I'd like to word it differently and see if you agree with this. Are we granting a blank slate of entitlements that do not lock them into an RV park and give them the ability to to say, okay, well, we, we transmitted X, but now we're going to come back and we're actually going to go ahead and build industrial in one of these aspects, even though we kind of said to you guys we were, we were going to just do an RV park. The only way that they could build um, industrial would be if they came in with a PUD that specifically said that they were going to do industrial. And as I mentioned earlier, they had included that in their PUD along with the RV park um, as options. I mean, it's, it's not unusual for um, a developer to come in and get a comprehensive plan amendment, map amendment, and then come in for a rezoning and have multiple uses that they're proposing because they want to react to the market. And we've approved those before. Yep. In this case, they have been very specific in proposing two different development scenarios, which is why staff was um, um, supportive with that approach and we recommended conditions that would address each development scenario. So you had spe specificity of what could be expected. Well, since that LPA, the um, applicant again has, um, has relayed to me that they are withdrawing the industrial development aspect of it and they're only focusing on the RV park resort um, development, which will have commercial in the front and the 
um, mixture of the RV uh, resort, which will have amenities and so on within the property. Um, the fine-tuning of the PUD application will occur between now and the public hearing that will occur in October. We don't have it's the, the exact date. It's more than likely going to be the second meeting in uh, October, and that would be held here in these chambers, uh, again at 5 o'clock like tonight. And that would give you the opportunity for the folks that live in the on this side of the county to participate uh, more readily. And so I don't know if I can add to any more of your questions or concerns. They don't have to go back to the LPA, do they? They do not. They come just to you all. That, does that answer your question, sir? Thank you. Uh, and the whole the whole thing with that too is once that's once that's set and the date is set, as residents you'll you'll have an opportunity to come back that night and we'll speak to it then and you will see exactly what's taking place yeah. at that point. And and let me add to that there will be another advertisement in the paper and additional letters will be sent out to the surrounding property owners for notification. Does <clears throat> anyone else in the public like to speak to that? Further discussion on the board. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Yes, the first time I have for you is a uh, adoption of an illicit discharge ordinance. Uh, the Florida Department of, of Environmental Protection has required the county to obtain a National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit, which we already obtained some time ago. And as part of that, they required that we have an ordinance that prohibits the discharge of illicit substances into the waterways that feed into the industrial canal, which we manage through the that it be adopted via ordinance uh, so that's what we're doing we're fulfilling that requirement it's an ordinance that would prohibit those discharges it's only effective within the boundaries of the East Henry County Drainage District and it's to fulfill the requirement of DEP make a motion to approve second, second. back Mr. Glacier second back Mr. Bird is there any further discussion on this, is this a public hearing as well anyone of the public like to speak to this at this time and on all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is your local vendor preference. Uh, you've had this for many years. Uh, you've had a sunset every two years and then re renewed it for a few year periods. And, you know, staff is just proposing that maybe you eliminate the sunset. Make a motion to approve the uh, recommendation of removing the sunset uh, date associated with the local vendor preference. Second. Back to Mr. Chair. Second by Commissioner Iglesias. Anyone in the public like to speak to this? Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Staff reports, Ms. Emblage. Yes, <clears throat> Commissioners, with the, with the results of the legislative session, uh, the counties have been mandated in cities to uh, amend their comprehensive plans to include private property rights element. This was this, um, I'll just go with. So uh, we are proposing or requesting um, direction from the board to pursue this amendment to the comprehensive plan. Uh, the actual um, objectives and policies that would be involved are, are not any different than what's already in place. It's, it's not expanding private property rights. It's just ratifying them in our comprehensive plan. Even though we have been applying and considering private property rights through our reviews, again, it's just another opportunity to ratify them in our, our comprehensive plan. So I'm looking for direction or <coughs> approval to proceed. You want to proceed, don't you? Yes, sir. I move that we'll go forward. Motion by Commissioner <coughs> Harris, second by Commissioner Bird. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, good evening again for the record, Katie Wellner, County Planner. This agenda item is a request from planning staff to pursue a tree preservation requirement as part of some of the site standards amendments that staff will be bringing forward in the next few months. 
So on May 25th, a member of the public addressed the board requesting a tree preservation ordinance. At that time, the board directed staff to do more research and come back to the board. Um, staff has researched tree preservation requirements all over the state. Uh, and a table of that was included in the executive summary that was in your packets. Um, since or staff has since gotten direction from the board to pursue additional site requirements for residential and non-residential development. So we'd like to address the trees holistically through some preservation language in that portion of the amendments that we're proposing. Um, so with your permission, planning staff would like to incorporate the tree preservation ordinance into a couple land development code amendments um, addressing the gateway corridor and residential site standards and some non-residential design stuff coming forward in the next few months. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them at this time. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. So let's just say you're uh, Walmart parking lot in LaBelle has oak trees that are five to six years old and that whole plaza sells and um, the new owner says I want to remove those trees what happens today in Hendry County so today in Hendry County we have that Walmart would be part of theoretically the gateway corridor um, and so there's a minimum number of trees that's required and plantings required in the parking lot for that code section. We do not have that in all of the code sections, though. So, um, non You're saying it's only in the gateway? It's only in the gate. Well, it's mostly in the gateway. Um, there are, we would want to have minimum planting stand. I mean, you're going to have buffers and things on all non-residential development um, for Parking area plantings, it's a little bit different. The gateway corridor is a little bit more intense than the other areas of the county. Um, we would like to be able to require trees and, and parking lots and, you know, non-residential development, so uh, commercial, industrial throughout the county. So that's something that we're probably going to be bringing forward. Um, and so right now, for your example, if they sell the property and the person that buys it cuts down all the trees, they would be required to replant based off of what was approved in their site development plan. Um, and that wouldn't change. They just got to replace them. <clears throat> Correct. The city has real good tree ordinance. And the city of LaBelle has a, has a good tree ordinance. Um, but I think... Theirs is more on aged trees, old trees, right? Oak trees, that's old. Oak. Yeah. No, but I'm talking about older trees. They're 50, 60 year old trees. Well, the person can buy that property, go in and whack down every tree that's out there if they're moved to do that? Well, Got to replant. technically, yes, but they would have to replant it to meet the, the landscaping requirements of the code. Um, with the city of LaBelle, they actually, I think, have sort of a two tier approach. They preserve all oak trees that are, I think, over eight inches at DBH, so uh, diameter at breast height, so, you know, four feet off the ground, how wide is that tree to essentially determine how old it is. So an eight-inch tree is sort of established, um, and it, you know, assuming that it's healthy, um, that would be protected, and then they have an additional layer of protection for oak trees that are much larger, so 24 or 36-inch DBH, um, that's a different, I mean, you're talking about grand oaks at that point, which is a uh, you know, hundred year old tree, not just like a couple year old tree. Um, I think that staff would love to see a, a heritage tree preservation. So the, you know, the oak trees that are 24, 36 inches at DBH, we would love to be able to, uh, you know, keep those or give some sort of preservation to those. Uh, but it, I think that that would be part of these upcoming, you know, site improvement type amendments that we're going to be bringing forward. Only thing I just add to that is, I mean, you know, this moves at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, if, if a developer comes in and acquires X number of, of lots mm -hmm. and you have, you know, you have pine trees that are 150 years old out there. They're, they're going to be whitewashed with everything else. And I just don't, you know, I hate to see it. Um, I would have loved to have seen if we had what the city of LaBelle had whenever the expansion of 80 came through right here. I think we could have shut that down. And you look at what you look at what we allowed 
the DOT and or contractor to whitewash there and for what it was actually doing from a drainage swell standpoint, you know, it's just, it's asinine that, that we didn't have any more protections or any more foresight. And I'm, and I'm not saying somebody else did and I didn't. I was sitting right over there and said, you know, get, get that road going, you know, but, you know, then you come back into town one day and all of that's cleared out. And so I'm just, you know, I'm looking forward to y'all. I'm I appreciate, appreciative of what you've done thus far. Um, this is one of the ones that I'm, I'm looking forward to having constituents call me up and say, you know, when did we become such environmentalists in Henry County? And we can have a great conversation about this because, you know, I just, I don't know, man, <laughs> cutting down, cutting down a 150 year old tree, maybe because I'm a little bit older now, it, it, it stings the senses for a while, you know? Yeah. And, um, and there's some great code examples in, in Florida um, for tree preservation. Um, Alachua County has a really great, very comprehensive tree code. Um, there's some that are really simple. O Okeechobee County has, you know, we s they essentially preserve all oak trees over a certain size. And in order to remove them, you have to request a variance. There's lots of different examples in, in the state to draw from. Um, I think it's just finding what is best for us and most um, easiest to implement or they're, they're, reliable to implement. They're cleaning them out in Port LaBelle. Yeah, they are. And, and you know, you, I just I don't think a lot of times developers take into consideration how much value that adds to a property. They just want to give a blank slate so they can put, you know, X number. They want to sell it and get the money. And so, you know, I, I've looked in to what Tallahassee, what the city of Tallahassee and mm -hmm. Leon County has. Good Lord. I mean, they, they put a premium on their trees, you know. Um, I, I have not had any conversation with Okeechobee County, but I, I do encourage you all to really move on this one, if you could. Well, and one of the things that we looked at, and part of the reason why we want to incorporate it into some of the like the siting standards uh, that we're bringing forward is like, if if I tell you that you can't cut down a tree or that you should preserve a tree, but we don't require any trees for any type of you know residential development or you know we don't have the one tree and the five shrubs and the whatever ground cover, it's hard to really preserve and maintain your tree canopy if you're only looking at like you can't cut down the the 24 inch tree but you can cut down all the other ones you don't have to replant any of them so that we have to look at it a little bit more holistically to ensure that we're going to maintain our tree canopy over time um, and make sure that we have good design standards it's a very slippery slope i don't know what y'all's thoughts are on it I like um you know my, my fear is i ride back to hooker's point one day and U.S. Sugar's done something at Sugarland Park to get rid of all the Australian pines, all of the banyan trees, because they're not in something that that says, well, it wasn't an oak tree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you know, we go into we go into Pioneer, and you know, Callisto's cleaned out every one of those dadgum pine trees that are that you know I can't wrap my arms around. For a pine tree to get that big, it's old. You know. Yeah. And so, you know, once again, I go back to I just think we need to act aggressively on this one, because. Uh, that is what well, people don't have a mindset of, of, of preserving that whenever they want yeah. to develop. Well, and one of the things that we'll have to decide moving forward, um, if we decide to do a, a straight tree preservation ordinance is what types of trees we want to preserve, whether it's going to be only oak trees and then what types of oak trees, because city of LaBelle, um, includes water oaks, laurel oaks, and live oaks in their, um, oaks. preservation. But water oaks have a lifespan of like 30 years. Laurel oaks have a lifespan of about 60, whereas live oaks have a lifespan of 200 plus. And so really the emphasis should be more on, on a live oak than a water oak. Um, and then you also have really great Florida native trees with the cypress trees and the pine trees. And, you know, those are equally as beneficial to the environment and to the aesthetics of the community. Um, so that's something that we'll have to sort of cross when we get there. Anyway, they want the oaks where the uh, leaves don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> I got four, and don't bloom. I got four no acres of them. <laughs> don't want that kind. So when they come in in Port LaBelle, they want to build a house on this little bitty lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's an oak tree where they're going to build a house, so they got to take the oak tree up. Mm -hmm. so take it up and build a house. Do they have to replace oak tree in the back or side or something 
That's what that's that what would be part of this. That's what you're yep. working on now. Yep, that would be part of this. Good. I um uh, I I sent an email, I don't know if I sent it to you, Miss Emmons, but I know I sent it to Miss Davis, but I think she may have forwarded it on. But I think this needs to be part of the of the permitting process as you as you move forward. And I think this needs to be I you know, when I talk to contractors, I don't know. I don't know if these contractors are uh, viewed in your eyes as professional or unprofessional or you know above board or below. But I don't know. What I know is when I talk to a, a gamut of contractors, I I don't routinely get told, but I do get told, man, I I didn't really understand the permitting process that I was going to have to go to here. When I talk to constituents, they're they're very clueless to, well, what do you mean it's not your jurisdiction? to worry about the septic tank you know you know why do i have to talk to another entity to get my co for my home and i think that you know you say well where are you going with this i think we need to have a streamlined process and i want this to be a policy discussion on our level so when an owner builder comes in to do something this is the application that they have to fill out and it sticks with carson turner forever and a day and that's what gets pulled for his file that he has to, he gets a copy, you get a copy, and the public can see it on a live database at any given time by just mm -hmm. looking up my name and here you go, we're all free for the play. If Clyde Johnson Roofing and whatever his name of his company is comes in, they, they have to do the same thing. They have a couple different boxes. Mm -hmm. They have client representation as well, but then, but then it also is there for all of us to see at the liking. And the reason why I'm a huge proponent of this is I get wore out with the, well, I said this, and this is what staff did or I said this and this is what they said I did you know and I just think that we need to we need to have the ability to, to swipe through that because I'm telling you right now in Miami-Dade I'm trying to do an a, a well Kiwit contracting is trying to do a temporary trailer set so far out in the middle of nowhere that, that if, if I gave you a pin Miss Emblidge on your iPhone you couldn't find it and the process that we're having to jump through to to get the electrical service to those construction trailers, I you know I couldn't imagine something being more difficult. I say all of that to say there is no process for me to go online, and you know they've referenced me to two or three things, and I just think that this is a this is I don't know what technology is out there, but we need to we need to identify it. We need to create a streamlined process. I think it'll help y'all. Yeah. It'll help us, and it'll help our constituents to understand. You know, and it's going to be able to help us combat. You know a number of myriads a myriad of issues that we're having all right just just to um, inform you we have checklists for every one of our our building permits we go through them with the applicant whether it's the homeowner or the contractor we all of that is put on our uh, track it system which is accessible by the public mm -hmm. and so is it perfect <clears throat> probably not but um, we do have that already in place. We have um, our applications as required by the Florida statutes. We have our applications on our website. Mm. And we get calls every day from contractors and property owners on what they can do on their property and what they have to go through. And we send them applications. We send them the checklist with the applications. We, I will tell you that unlike other jurisdictions, we spend so much time on the phone describing our processes and the requirements that they have to go through, what uh, departments they have to touch on different parts of the application process. We spend more, most of our days explaining this to, to um, the, the residents or the, um, the applicants. Now, I realize it's never going to be enough for folks. You know, there's always going to be questions, and we're describing something that is foreign to them. We know that. And so we're, we're doing the best we can from that perspective. If we can improve it, we will. Um, but it is, we already have some of those tools there. Just wanted you to know that. Yep. Okay? I, I, yep, I look forward to it, and I think we can create some efficiencies. I have a motion on this? Make a motion. Second. Back to Mr. Harris, second back to Mr. Bird. Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.
that. You ready for me? I've been ready. Okay. All right. So this next agenda item um, has to do with the uh, preemption that the state uh, adopted into law that uh, we, uh, the, the counties are preempted from um, requiring local contractor licensing. And it's primarily what it's for is uh, the specialty licenses that uh, the county um, the county offers and uh, the, now I'm stuck for explaining this. So what we have, what we have in the staff report, we've described what the, the, the bill required and our recommendation and subsequent to this uh, staff report um, between the research that uh, Mr. Lapp has done and the discussions that Mr. Lapp, myself, and uh, Jennifer Davis have, ha have had, uh, we've changed our recommendation um, to an approach we think is uh, a little more fair to the existing contractors that have... That you, you've changed from what you have here? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, um, because we... W the in one part of the bill, it suggests that we can't do... Well, it states that we can't allow or approve any new contractor licenses. Um, and then in another section of it, it refers to allowing uh, specialty licenses to be extended through uh, June 30th, 2023. And at that time, uh, then no longer can we uh, require or um, approve uh, contractor licensing specialty contractor licensing uh, that are um, from the local um, government. Ms. Simmons, what, what is happening, correct me if I'm wrong, is the state legislature is saying, listen, Hendry, Glades, other 65 counties in the state, we don't want you guys to issue a specialty license or a contractor license. We want all licensing to be Florida building code or Florida approved, Florida certified. State of Florida certified. Am I? Am I? That's correct. I'm not boiling it down incorrectly. So, partially correct. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with it? So the state licenses only certain trades. Okay. Big trades. You yes, know, sir. The, the roofing, plumbing, you know, the, and a bunch more. Yep. There's probably 20 or 30 that they have a state license available for, <laughs> and that would continue, and that would, and, and we actually could continue to have our own program for those with okay. lesser standards, but they're really wanting us to get out of and everyone to get out of is licensing the more specialized trades like carpentry or I shouldn't say specialized but the you know the less intense or less um, involved trades like carpentry or um, well just a handyman uh, mindset yeah and there's a lot of trades we have you know there, we have 40 <laughs> of different licenses in our code it goes on and we on have. and on so and one of the questions so I wanted to have out. was of the 40 that we have Obviously, we also have a database that shows how many we've issued, right? Yes. And do we, we have do we have hundreds of people, or do we have? I saw the twelve. You know, the the, the thing you said, yeah, right. twelve contractors. Right. That's the local specialty that falls within that. I don't want to. Here's what I'm driving at, Ms. Simpson. I don't want to have hours or even a prolonged discussion over twelve particular contractors. If if we need to, so you're saying we can grandfather them in until 2023. Correct. And then is it a phasing out process and everybody gets queued up with whatever particular license they have? What are, and what are we trying to avoid here? Are we trying to avoid unlicensed people from performing against licensed contractors? What's the goal here? Well, I, I can't speak for what the state did because okay. I, I think there's unintended consequences that were created by this bill. And, and I, I think it's more negative than, than anything because what they've created is all of these specialty, local specialty licenses that we have in other counties and cities and so on, these folks will no longer be able to pull a permit. And so that would, it, the, the consequence of that is, is that somebody in some of these trades can go out and do work for um, Grandma Jones, and Grandma Jones doesn't have the um, uh, the uh, protections of license uh, insurance, 
and you know certifications and so on and the work could be shoddy shoddy and they don't have recourse um, that's just one example of, of what I'm concerned about or we are concerned about but the county has issued said shoddy performer a license oh no they've had to go through they, no okay no um, the license the, the, our local specialty licenses do have requirements. Okay. They have to take classes, um, and they have to provide certain uh, information to show that they are capable of, of performing their um, trade. And some of the specialty licenses that we have um, are similar to the state, but it has less involved requirements. So. I, first of all, the amended recommendation that, that we have tonight is that we um, adopt an ordinance and that will be brought back to you on at the next meeting that would extend the effective dates of the specialty contractor licenses through 6-30-23, but we would not approve any new specialty contractor licensing. So this would allow those folks that are on this list, and I'm sorry I don't have the number of, of contractors that this touches, but it, it's, it's enough to make a difference. These folks will be able to still pull a permit, and they'll have until 2023 to figure out what they're going to do. And we'll have until 2023 to figure out the unintended consequences that might be able to be fixed by the Florida legislature. And so, um, what um, anyway? So what we wanted to do was to present an ordinance for you all to um, to extend these specialty local specialty licenses to the the six thirty twenty three date. Mark, did you want to add something to that? So, like, if I'm gonna do drywall, I have to come in. If I'm a subcontractor doing drywall. I have to come in. Well, as a subcontractor, you're going to have a contractor that's like that has a state license. So I just work under him. You would work under him, um, but um, again, on our um, applications, our our permanent applications, you're required to list all your subcontractors. And um, the drywall example maybe isn't the best one because they, right. the Would state. You, let's get a better one then. State does issue a drywall license. Oh, okay. Under the state uh, construction licensing, construction industry licensing board, they have a specialty license for a few categories: drywall, demolition, irrigation, marine, solar, water heating, structures. Those are ones that people, if they want to work in those fields, they can get a state certificate. Right. So they'll be able to get one, and they'll be able mm -hmm. to pull permits on their own going forward, even with all these changes. Right. If they take the time and effort to get the state license essential if yes okay, yeah and and there's their Hendry County contractor specialty license doesn't qualify them on a, on a state basis. that's correct right? so they can't they can't leave our jurisdiction unless we know there's reciprocity with a, a county is there anybody that's allowing you know I don't, think, I don't know if we are if we are we don't know our reciprocity for registered contractors from another county to come in and pull a permit here well, they, they have to register with us. So we don't yes. have reciprocity. We don't receive reciprocity. I don't know if anyone else takes ours. You yeah. know. Don't most of them have a state license? No, they don't. And, and, and that's why with, with the amount of, <laughs> of folks that rely on our local specialty licenses for a living to be able to pull a permit to do the work that, that they are uh, qualified to do uh, per our code, um, they're going to be left out of the process. I mean, and, and the example I gave of the worst case scenario is going to be the, um, the end user, the homeowner that they come and do work on their property, you know, could end up getting um, the, the bad end of the deal. So you don't know the process right now. If <clears throat> one, if said did work without its license, you don't know consequences of it yet it's going to be a civil matter between the two of them and it's not something that the county would be involved in do you know how this came about um, I know 
except for the Florida legislature uh, went through the process of um, you know creating this bill that turned into law. If their bills don't make any it's sense anyway. It's going to hurt a lot of people. You oh, this makes a, no, no, I disagree with both of y'all. This makes a ton of sense. There, there is so much unlicensed. There, there are so many people competing. Listen, do you know how easy it is to buy an F-150, uh, get a tool bag starter kit from Febco, and get a metal ladder and call yourself an electrician and go to work? It's, it's simple. You can do it. You can do the same thing by saying you're a backhoe operator. Doesn't mean you're qualified. Doesn't mean you're qualified at all, you know, and and you know to say well there's not work out there. There's at least three different programs that are that are trying to get people to engage right now, that are a base fourteen to eighteen dollar base fourteen to eighteen dollar salary. They're going to guarantee you a job by the time you're in your third year of it. You're you're guaranteed something like sixty eight or seventy grand a year, you know. But it, it requires discipline. It requires showing up, and it requires getting after it every day. And, and, you know, you, you can't work 25 hours a week and get paid cash under the table and not have insurance, not have workers' comp mm -hmm. to deal with, not have a, a, a front that you pay taxes on. Because I can guarantee you, my dadgum dumpster cost alone with, I don't know, their WSI or whoever they are right now, is more than what I see some of the electricians, you know, competing against us and doing a service in Tropical Mobile Home Trailer Park. In case you can't tell, I'm a little bit heated about this one. Or fixing an overhead... Uh, you know, oven in somebody's restaurant, you know, I, I can go down the line of things that I witness on a day-to-day -day basis that I never pick up the phone and call, I don't know if it's code enforcement or Henry County Sheriff's Department or, you know, the, the, the ferries that you're supposed to visit with about chasing these people down, but I just leave it alone. Our prices are absurdly high and we have our niche. But but I also think that we ha we have an obligation to protect our constituents and give them as, as best a product as possible as it relates to the eyes of the people that are issuing these permits so that when a house does burn down, you know, it's not because someone doesn't know what in the heck they're doing whenever it takes a shot from a lightning uh, strike or something like that. And so I, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of merit to this. Do I like state preemption? Absolutely not. But I think that this has merit. I, there is some merit to it, but it leaves so many folks out out of work. Uh, well, <clears throat> out of work or working under the table or without the, the proper um, qualifications to do the work that um, I think it's increasing that... Um, are you making... I'm, I'm asking. Are you making an argument that there's a large volume of people in our area that have the capacity to perform the work and they could do it but they don't have the ability to get the license. No. No, they got the specialty license. No, no, no. I'm saying that there's there's an, a, a number of people that have our local specialty license. Okay. That 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 requires certain certain steps for qualifying for this license. Give us an example of one. Of what type of industry? Um. Uh, oh, I hear I hear somebody from. Behind. <coughs> yes. My name is Lynn Jordan. I'm the building official. Uh, a, a major. Let me use this gentleman as as a reference. Um, a guy I've known all my life. His name is Clay Howard. He builds fences. He uh, he pulls probably three or four permits a week to build. Maybe not a week a month to to, to build fences around here. That's all he's done all his life. Yep. Okay. If they take this away from him, he's not going to be able to pull fences. So the only way he can legally, and a fence is not a permit that the Florida Building Code requires a permit, uh, a fence is something that we at the county require. So he's not going to be able to pull permits. So he's either going to have to work on a lawn or builder, which is, you know, some people consider shady, or he's going to have to get a some type of contractor license. All right? And... If he's been building fence for 20 years, he's not going to qualify for any type of license in the construction industry, if you understand what I'm saying. Perfect. You're saying he doesn't need to be a GC no. to build a fence. Well, that's right. Perfect that's, example. That's what I'm saying. Perfect example. This, this bill is not going to affect a lot of people, but there's a handful, a handful of them that, that it's really going to affect. So in essence, we'd shut him down. Yeah, absolutely. Business. But like, I mean, he can still work, yeah. but he's going to be working under the stipulation of he's going to have to go tell this person 
that he don't have the ability to pull a permit no more. And if they want him to work for him legally, they got to go get their own permit, and then he will work for them. Okay, but in that same breath, how many times has not Clay Howard? I don't know if Clay Howard pulls a fence every t pulls a permit every time, but how many times have we seen a fence pop up? And there's no permit associated with it. We we don't want to acknowledge that that happens a fair amount. Well, well, that happens. That happens. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know what I mean. That, that happens. <clears throat> but, but you know, I, th this is just one instance yep. that I'm that I'm referring to, and but, but, and I've went through the list, and and like I said, a majority of it I agree with, but there is, you know, there's going to be a few people that this is really going to affect, but you know, I don't I don't I don't, I don't know what we can do about it. I do know I do know uh, it, in your example that you're using right there. Okay. That's an easy one where I think you educate a legislator, and you say. You know there there needs to be uh, amendments to you know to this bill and and there needs to be things that are written in that says this is a classification that's separate unto itself. You know I can guarantee in Levy County there's mm -hmm. a Clay Howard. You right. know in Brevard County where they still have a few cow pastures left and, right. and Volusia and Martin so and so. You know there are cats up there that are doing the exact same thing, and I don't I don't know what their rules and regs are for having to have that fence pulled, but I just I I. I see both angles of it. I think you're saying the same right. thing. So um, I would love to know what those are as it relates to us specifically, locally. What are other ones that are like that? That's a great example that you use, though. I agree. That's a great one. You know. All right. So the um, staff recommendation is that we come back Move with until 2023. Yes, sir. But come back in the interim to to give us the recommendations of the listings. Is that what you're saying? No. Or you're not going to touch it till 2023. Uh, no. Um, what the the first step is to adopt the ordinance for the extension. Okay. As as stated. Make a motion to approve uh, the uh, ordinance as stated, with allowing the grandfathering of of everyone essentially, Miss Emblidge, until the 2023 date. I'll second. What you're doing is you're authorizing, authorizing us to schedule a public hearing for that because this is not this is the initial discussion. We didn't advertise public hearing because we didn't know what you wanted to do. Right. So it will be the September 14th meeting that will have an ordinance for adoption to do what you just said. You have the ability to do that between now and then? Yes, sir. Well, Mark's going to write it up for me. <laughs> so we have that time frame to do it. In and that time frame, could you give us more examples? Absolutely, I can. Uh, we can give you examples at the at the September fourteenth. Um, and I'd love to know the volume of people that we're talking about. Yes. Are we talking about sixty five contractors? Or are we talking about six? Right. We'll give you the, that information at the hearing. Right. Um, right. And um, and in the meantime, we'll be uh, preparing the amendments to our land development code in order to uh, remove all of those specialty licenses and all the various sections in the our code of ordinances that um, touch or, or are touched by this preemption and we'll be prepared to go forward with those um, but I am hoping that there's going to be some uh, glitch amendments maybe on uh, this legislation. You know Ms. Emily, it's just one thing that I just thought of uh, land clearing you know uh, I don't know if y'all agree with this but I don't think you should have to be a general contractor to be able to have a skid steer with a mulch blade on it or a mini X or even a larger excavator with a grinder on the front of it and, and be able to to you know stump remove clear stuff out get a grade ready for a GC to come in and get a foundation going and move forward right well yeah. we have the clearing permit that we've talked about previously <laughs> and um, the clearing permit is primarily for those situations not agriculture but for those situations where folks are just clearing their property um, before they're going to develop it with a residence or a commercial parcel and that's all rolling into the tree preservation discussion yeah. and everything else that we're talking about so um, we would still um, they would still be able to I mean I don't know that would they be able to come in and get a permit my well, without a contractor license um, you well, know like two years they would License. No, we don't. So they didn't need a license yeah. previously. They just need a permit. Right. Thank how you many for lot, I'm sorry. How many lots are getting cleared now without a permit? I mean, how are we going to even catch that? 
Well, uh, you're right. I mean, it's just like a lot of our codes. You know, how do we catch it? Um, we do the best we can. And, and we get the word out, especially with the land clearing. Um, you know, we've got, we get the word out to folks and contractors and folks that are going to do business by, by the book. But we do know, and I'll use Montour as an example, um, there's a lot of folks that go and, and clear on the weekends. And it's, it, you know, we only, um, you know, we can only catch them certain times, and, and we do. But uh, then we have folks that come in and get a permit to clear, and they're kind of um, not happy about the fact that they're doing the right thing and other folks aren't. So, um, again, th this is... This is this is this is something that happens all the time with our code. Um, you know, we have a huge book. Mark, you see that book in front of Mark? Those are all the the code of ordinances that we have that we are required to implement and enforce. And it's really tough to to do it all all the time. And you know, so you're going to have a lot of folks running under the radar. Unfortunately, I believe that's what we're opening the door to with the legislation, the way they have written it. We're actually encouraging it. So Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe we had a motion and a second. Um, we had Commissioner Turner was a motion and Commissioner Glacier a second. So any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Emblitz. Mr. Blatt? Yes, so we have the uh, Townsend Good Canal grade item. This is for the... Um, purchase from the landowner of what the up to 60 feet although we own a significant portion of it approximately 30 feet by way of use and maintenance over many years uh, but the remainder of that envelope that 60 foot envelope is what we would be buying and uh, that needs to be appraised and so we have a process set forth in the contract for that appraisal to occur and that to be our purchase price with kind of an opt-out if and a second opinion if that's necessary. Um, but this is the contract for purchase for your consideration. Mr. Chair? That goes from the beginning of 80 to the end? It goes to the end of Townsend Canal grade that we currently maintain, right. which is the due south without any turns, right? Correct. What about the improvements, that the water management? If they're going in there and improve Townsend Canal, <coughs> do some work on it? <coughs> Oh, they agreed to that already. Yeah, I thought they did. Too. For the record, Shane Parker, County Engineer. They are going to, right now they're lowering the grade of Townsend Canal grade all the way to 80, and they're going to come back and add rock, and they're also going to add guardrail. That's what the district is going to do. And the portion that Mark's talking about is going from the southern end of the subject property of SWJR land development to their northern end. So at the terminus of Townsend Canal grade, going north to the northern portion of the property. And then there's a one, two, there's four landowners north of this that we'd have to get land from eventually. There's four uh, landowners even north of this? North of this. You got Murphy, conservation properties. Actually, there's three. So so we so we go through the process of appraisal in this market. We put $1,000 down to show that we're going to operate in good faith to get this negotiation done. <coughs> and we still don't have the entirety of the easement that we want. That's correct. Uh -huh. and yes. This is in your item um, B, B in the packet, okay. which was so the, we got which the, was first the comp plan. Yes, sir. If you look back, there's a nice map there. It's maybe. I don't think I don't think that'd be a problem. Six or eight pages back from Margaret's staff report, and it's got a map, and you can see it's the property that you get the comp plan on is an L shape roughly, and so there's some property. That's portion of it of Townsend Canal grade that's not part of this deal. I, I don't think there's... Because they don't own it. At one time, Shane, when they're going to pave that for us? Who's they? I imagine. They don't want to get any money. No, sir, we're trying to talk them into paving. They have not committed to paving. But you're they still can, talking. We're still talking. We have a motion. So move. Uh, I'm 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 not understanding something here. Uh, obviously, I'm a I'm a huge proponent of us trying to get this road 
I'm just, I don't understand why we've maintained something for a number of years, and now now we're going to go and pay for it, and we're, I don't even, you know, I, I guess we have to, we have to go through the appraisal process to know exactly what we're potentially purchasing, but this is a dumb time to be appraising stuff. Well, what's the, what's the time sensitive aspect of this? Okay, so, um, everything's at a premium, I guess is what I'm saying. Right. So, um, we're wanting to buy us, we're wanting to have a 60 foot wide envelope for a right of way. That's what we want, a 60 feet of width. And the county only has approximately 30 feet of width that we can say we own by virtue of maintenance over the years. And so the boundary of that is, you know, you can see it when you're walking in the field, but you can't, it's not uh, legally described. So we're getting that legally described, and then you're going to be recording a map that delineates that, and that will be owned by statute, that width. Some of, it's mostly 30 feet, it might be 28 in some places, it might be 32 in other places, the survey will show that. The, um, we're buying the remainder of the 60. But why? What, what, is, the, what is the current owner going to do with 32 feet or 28 feet or 12 feet that, that we would not, we would, they would not be benefited by us having acquisition for that and being able to put infrastructure in. I'm all about us putting infrastructure in here. I'm just not a big proponent of us acquiring dirt to put the infrastructure in. Uh, you know, none of y'all have said it, but if, if, you know, if this were Art Lawrence Road and I was willing us to acquire the piece from, from uh, U.S. Sugar that's adjacent to Art Lawrence Canal and I don't know if it's East Angel, I don't know who owns that. Y'all would say, no, we, need, we just need a 15-foot road there. You know, tell me, tell, me why I'm, tell me where I'm mistaken on that. Parker can address the idea of why we want 60 as opposed to just 30. And if, I don't understand why they're not wanting to, if, if we're going to put the infrastructure in, you're saying you're ready to put the infrastructure in, correct? No, we're not ready, but we don't have the money to pave that road. South Florida is currently going down the road. It's a high grade. They're putting upgrades in it. They're lowering the grade of the road. They're going to move it over. Out. They're going to do a handful of things. Right, and then they're going to put rock and guardrail up for On us. On their dime. On their dime, yes, right? sir. That's correct. And they have a 50-foot easement, and they're going to put that, they're going to put that, they're going to build that road within that 50-foot easement. We would like to pave it. We'd like them to pave it. We do need drainage for the road because right now it just slopes one way to the property. There's no water quality component. There's no conveyance, just sheet flows on the property. We'd like 60 foot so we have something to work with. That's the minimum. And we maintain, like Mark <coughs> said, we have a 30 foot easement that goes way back. There's several of them, but there's two of them in particular that cover Towns of Canal Grade. Some cases were, actually, I think we're more, we're like almost. 40 feet in some cases and it next down to 30 it's it just meanders but we grade and then we mow beside it we've been doing it for years and we get that in fee simple we just got to file the map and we're actually surveying that now Shane, Shane you don't think those people would donate the land they've said publicly they wouldn't donate it I would love for them to well, but they complain all the time well it wasn't that they haven't complained the people oh, them that, was the ones out of Wheeler Estates were trying to get out too. Oh. Right. You've got the the other parcel owners we haven't approached about land, but when we do this map that Mark was referring to, it'll get us from it'll have us in fee simple with what we maintain that goes beyond the easement oh, okay. all the way to eighty. Tell me tell me where I'm incorrect that we're not setting a precedent for the other property owners that we don't even have at the table right now, that if we get an appraisal I don't know what the number is, okay, but that we're not setting a precedent for you to go get your your appraisal done, and and we're getting ready to stroke three more checks or two more checks for whatever it may be. Whenever I think if we have a a good discussion with all of these people in the room and say this is an upgrade on your property that's going to allow for ingress and egress, the county's going to be willing to put the infrastructure in, and and. I think that that I think that alone in itself increases their value of their property. I'm just I'm just wanting to know what you all think on this, Ms. Davis. Okay, well then, then I'm not willing. Then, then, then if they're not willing to donate, then I'm not willing to appraise it. 
and it can sit there and hang out and we can have a weird easement and we'll just we'll we'll hang out for a little while <clears throat> my thoughts mr. chair tell me why you hate or dislike or disagree with that idea because I understand that's your constituency base down there to the south well the, the biggest the biggest thing to be honest with you I've asked the same question and I kind of got away from it because the, the first question I asked we have 30 feet we need 21 22 feet for a road 10 11 foot running lanes what you have so I've asked the same question and I got the same explanation that mr. Parker just gave all of us they were looking for the extra drainage and other things there as well if it's a two-lane road through there I don't care I just want to get those folks that pay Henry County taxes driving home from Henry County I without go going to Lee. <laughs> don't go to Lee County I've heard you I want say you more to go more. home yes, get your mail get your stuff and do not leave Henry County yes. so if it's a if it's a two-lane road I don't care uh, the whole the whole the whole deal for me is let's get them inside Henry County they've been paying taxes all these years and have nothing to show for it well my problem is we're gonna <clears throat> approve to purchase a piece of property without knowing the value and we're gonna base it on what the appraisal is and I can tell you the property that uh, Will Rudd has on on 27 uh, I had it appraised and it came back at 275,000 but his appraisal was uh, 975,000 so <laughs> yeah Mark that's not true is it we're gonna get it appraised but it don't mean we gotta buy it no he actually put a caveat in there that we can disagree with that appraisal or have a second appraiser come in yeah. so if you don't have to doesn't do bind that. us to anything not quite so uh, it, the way it's written is if we don't like the appraisals read the first appraisal result we can order another appraisal if that second appraisers number is within 25 percent of the first appraisers number then we are obligated to continue with this purchase for the first appraisers value well, I'm absolutely not agreeing to that thank you for clarifying I, I apologize for being illiterate and to the constituent of Henry County for not paying attention to that thank you for asking that question and so now I, I even I'm even less uh, desirable of, of moving forward I like moral roads <coughs> they're all over my district <laughs> so don't believe me Shane and I drove down 23rd today it sucks right now pioneer I've had four texts Motor graders down, people are sick, we got a sprained ankle, Delta variant's kicking us in the tail at Road and Bridge Department right now. So what equipment we have left. <laughs> Easy. Did they make a motion, yes, sir. No second the motion fails. Do you wanna do you do you wanna do you wanna vet it anymore or are you good with it? Okay, I like it. I had um, <clears throat> one other item sign on the agenda. It's the redistricting issue. I'm happy to discuss it now or at the very end of the meeting or not at all, whatever your pleasure is. Full disclosure, Commissioner Iglesias, I threw you straight out your district today. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Uh, they, they were talking about sliding Miss Bird. So I just had a very brief discussion. Obviously, nothing's formal. But I just was talking to Miss Hoots, and I was saying, you know, why, why couldn't I take over uh, Taft and slide a little bit more into Montura? then the comment was made well we could we could push miss bird's district that side of the industrial canal let you take in a percentage over there and i said well miss bird's district is so concise and and compact i said it just makes sense to me if you take gulf view and you go straight across 27 through walmart and just take that neighborhood in right there <laughs> i said that's going to get her that's going to get her a huge population block right there you know no <laughs> and then i went wait hey jack leg there's a commissioner that lives in that neighborhood hey, there's, <laughs> there's some areas that i'll give you <laughs> but that's not that one <laughs> i can promise you that <laughs> i bet Rhonda would disagree with that <laughs> so anyway can um, we just take take it home look at it and come back yeah, that's what i want to do it's going to throw a it's going to throw a lot of confusion in 40 new acres taking half of that and it's going to be split between the two of us and they all live in the same spot so we'll just tell them it belongs to mr harris i used to have it all <laughs> i know you give it all to me thank you for this because the one that's on the computer <laughs> i'm over there with a magnifying glass well, there no, it was, and as again there was no roads for designation you had yeah. a main third third through but there was no yeah. right if we could do it if there's we did it with census blocks so that you could see you know you might say well why is the line here and not there well if, if you moved it to the left 
you'd have to grab the whole census block and you can kind of see what that does. Gotcha. And, and, but, you know, the alternative is to put roads on there, but then you don't have census blocks and so you're kind of flying blind about saying, well, I just want to move a little bit to the west. Well, you got to move way to the west with that census block, you know, just as an example. By well, the way, Port Bell's growing two or three hundred houses per year. Do you have to wait 10 years to readjust that? Yeah, we're not touching it again until 2031. Don't grow. Hey. All right. So we're not doing any action on no, that. The one, one thing I do want to mention is that the joint meetings with the school board, uh, joint public hearings, it, it, it will involve, we've talked about a, a schedule, the attorney for the school board and I, and it would involve an adjustment to their meeting calendar. So I wanted to run it past you because they're going to adjust their calendar to suit us. And so I don't want to make them do that if, if you all aren't agreeable to it. And so we would have two joint public hearings with the school board one in November in Clewiston and one in December in LaBelle. The one in November in Clewiston would be on the 9th in conjunction with our regular meeting, your regular meeting in the commission chambers. And so um, they don't meet then. You know, we're on opposite Tuesdays now. So they'd be coming to join you for that. And so that means in December we have to join them for a meeting that, that they're normally at. So their normal meeting would be December 7th. And, and we'd be, you'd be coming to that, not be having a regular board BOCC because you meet on the 14th, but you'd be doing the district redistricting discussion with them on the 7th. And it needs to be in LaBelle because you're already doing one in Clewiston. They're having to move their meeting from Clewiston to LaBelle on December 7th if we go with this plan. So that's the, but the change they... Don't they have the same information? I haven't even given this to them yet. I haven't given it to them yet, but... Because they normally, whatever we come up with, they agree on it. Yeah, but they... They want to review it, of course. That's so. what I mean. But if you get it to them, they can review it. Well, I was spending time with you first before I gave it to them because I didn't want you to tell oh, okay. me you hated it, and then I've already sent it to them. So, um, anyway, the, the, with that schedule, uh, they're um, they're changing their meeting. If you're agreeable, they're going to move their December meeting from Clewiston to LaBelle. And so, it, conceptually, does that meeting schedule sound appropriate, agreeable to you all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Ms. Davis. Good evening, Commissioners. For the record, Emily Hunter, Communications and Legislative Coordinator, Henry County. So you all received the draft uh, recommendations from staff for the 2022 Legislative Appropriation Requests. So this document is um, three of these. The first three would be the applications that we would submit, Hendry County would submit to the legislature. The last two are uh, appropriation requests from both cities that we would be supporting. The first one I believe you all are familiar with, that is the force main from <coughs> the city of Clewiston to Air Glades Airport. We have it as a placeholder because for all of these appropriation requests, we do have grants submitted to DEP. However, we feel the most confident, and I say that, you know, lightly, um, with the force main project as it's the smallest amount. Also, it's a project that I think everyone wants to finish, the state included, as they have been along this ride with us. So that is a $1.8 million ask. So we have that as a placeholder. Um, in speaking to our consultants, we are hoping to hear back from DEP in October. That's hoping we hear back in October. And then we're thinking that the house forms for the appropriation request would be due in November. So in the case that we do receive the funding, we would be able to just not submit that appropriation request and also potentially adjust the two plus requests based on if we receive funding and how much funding we receive from DEP. Um, so the uh, number two and number three being the Port LaBelle Utilities Wastewater Collection System. This is for sewer gravity main line expansion in unit one of Port LaBelle. Um, Shane can speak more if you have specific questions on that as well as the Port LaBelle Utility Water Treatment Plant expansion as to Commissioner's point, <coughs> Commissioner Harris's point, the Port LaBelle area is our a very rapidly growing area um, in our county. And so those three would be our actual appropriation requests. The City of LaBelle is requesting the water and sewer transmission loop from Helms Road to Lee, Co the Lee County line. 
and the city of Clewiston would be requesting the water line going um, alongside the force main from the uh, Clewiston treatment plant to Air Glades Airport. Any questions? On the uh, on items two and three, yes, sir. We submitted to DEP. What was our amount that we submitted to DEP on though? So for the wastewater collection system, we submitted a grant for seven million three hundred fifty-two thousand four hundred ninety-two dollars. Okay. For the plant expansion, we are cross-checking those numbers. <laughs> that million seems high, huh? Yes. Sir. So we'll get back to you on what that looks like. So are we looking at ranking these? Or is this what the staff's proposing that same order? Looking at ranking, we're looking at any comments or recommendations, concerns. I guess my only question is, is, is my only question is, is do y'all want to move four up to, to put the city of LaBelle higher and give it more juice from our standpoint, or does it really matter? I mean. But the way it one two three four the way it's lined up now, I think it's fine. Wastewater in Port La Bell is going to be huge. We've talked about that many many times. Yeah. We're putting septic tank after septic tank after septic tank. Mm -hmm. We're getting hammered, and it's not just locally; it's nationally. We're getting hammered about the the lake and the the runoff discharge. And uh, I would say that wastewater number two needs to stay at number two, and I'm just not sure that's enough. Yeah, and DEP should be all over that. Be, you, you would think they would one two. Uh, and uh, four or five as supports. I like it, bud. So remove number three. Yeah, the, the, the number three, the the uh, water treatment plant, the expansion of that we just did. Um, how many years ago, Jimmy? We just did. We just did a lot of work there. Uh, it was improved upon. The the tank was redone. How many years ago was that? Five, oh, seven, eight years ago now. Is that approximate somewhere right around there. So um, I mean, just in your opinion. Wastewater is way more of an issue than water at this point. That's where we're going to probably get the funding that we need to do work at. Yeah. Hey, what are the chances they're going to fund both of them? So again, the we have DEP grants in for one, two, and three. So I guess we're looking to see a if two and three are funded at all, and how much funding we get. These both number two and number three were requesting six hundred dollars, six hundred thousand dollars for design and permitting. And I will let Shane speak to the importance of why we need the design and permitting dollars specifically. Well, just out of curiosity, which unit is seeing the most growth out there right now? I know Port Labelle, but there's units one through nine. Or Shane, uh, Emily, when will the DEP award these grants? We're hoping that we hear in October. And when do we have to have this submitted to so Ray Robinson? we have the well we have a delegation hearing with Senator Pasadomo and Representative Mello on September 9th and that's when we need to present our appropriation request to them the House and the Senate have well the Senate hasn't even released their form yet the House has not announced when their submission date is so that's why we have a little bit of wiggle room in terms of if hopefully we have a little bit of wiggle room in terms of when DEP actually we find out who they've awarded, what they've awarded, and us being able to potentially tweak these requests based on if we receive funding. I would just think anything with wastewater would gain the most traction right now. Anyway, um, Shane Parker, for the record, Unit 1 is experiencing is the closest to getting the build out of all the units. That's why it was picked. And we have a... Um, we have a study from Tetra Tech that did all the units for the number of homes and how many lots and which one was building out the fastest and unit one was it. And we have a um, time frame of when we should have permitting and design dollars and everything going. And so I think the 600,000, as you said, Chairman, is the appropriate way to go first with wastewater collection. The plus water plant expansion, you remember you have your connection fees we've been collecting. If we have to, we can use those to start that process but you need to do the wastewater first but you should leave the utilities for the water plant on there because we have a good case for that
Chair, I make a motion to um, leave it as is. Chair, I'll talk to you back. Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. Further discussion. Just like to clean it up, obviously. And um, I mean, I know yes, this trap. You just got to. I do really want. I sent you an email today. That that drawing that we had. I think that that, that was very well For the received. Force, ma yes, ma'am. And I think that you know Representative Mello would just put her right in the track of understanding exactly what progress we've made thus far. We can make sure we have the years associated with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Try to get that pushed across and finished. Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Any EMS, right, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Looking for expensive. Kind of hiding. They're very expensive. The next item before you, we do have an update um, before you. That was in your board packet um, for the financing terms on the total Other than a 10 year term, hours before the board meeting, so Mark still got to finish reviewing them. Costs um, with county attorney. Ian Proverbs, OMB coordinator for the record. This is a lease purchase. Um, the total purchase price is $1,633,000. Um, we're looking to finance $1,273,059 for a seven year time, uh, term. And the annual payments are going to be $199,205.74. At an interest rate of 2.19%. Any questions? If you have any specific questions on the radius themselves, um, the sheriff is here, Chief Nelson is here, and also Amy is here from PMS. But as part of the CARES dollars, we gave the city of Clueless radio money, so they upgraded and they have already done so. Randy's also here that he could speak for that in the last few weeks. and it's well, as you know, we've had radio intercommunication issues for years because we couldn't speak to each other. Um, we had 800 megahertz radios. Um, the fire departments had 800 me megahertz radios. EMS and law enforcement couldn't speak. Now we can, but now we have another state mandate that comes upon us where we have to have upgrades. And if we don't do this, then we... had some money slated specifically for CARES because um, we didn't know what it was going to look like going into it. And so that's where the down payment is going to come from. So if you're saying that in 18 months we're not going to be able to communicate anyway, we really don't have much of a choice. Correct. What fund does uh, payments come out of? It'll come out of the capital. Capital? Okay. We didn't have this on our... Talking about it, um, I I didn't realize they were going to be this expensive. To be completely honest with you, but just to give you a little bit of history, when the sheriff updated theirs years ago, we had to upgrade ours, and we didn't have the money at that time, and we had to go take out a loan for what we have now, and we did it at the last minute, and we were scrambling. And so, um, with Houston PD doing theirs, we also gave the sheriff a half a million dollars as part of their CARES request um, to upgrade their dispatch radios and their dispatch equipment to be able to um, communicate with the, this new mandate. And so that's all, also already been funded. So, it's, so it's, it's, it's not just 1.583, it's that plus an additional 500. Plus an additional what we gave um, the city of Calista, which was around 800. Yes. Just for the radio, it's 360. Oh, 360 for the radio. Yes. Very expensive. And this is for the, the state system. Yes, ma'am. Make a motion to approve. By Commissioner Galatia, second by Commissioner Byrd. Yes, for clarification. Sorry to interrupt, but the, the staff report item 
write up for option one just said approve and enter into the purchase agreement with communications international source sole source uh, which you are doing but th th that's the purchase and then we got the financing part of the piece that he discussed but it's not in the written option one so I just be clear that your your motion includes the financing of it and the executing any documents associated with that and I'll revise my motion to include the financing as mark addressed <clears throat> and motion by Commissioner Glacius. Second by Commissioner Bird. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, first item is from the clerk's office to surplus uh, some equipment that Motion is to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner. Second by Commissioner Bird. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Last item I have before you is some last meeting you you all agreed with the tax deed applications we backed off of those um, according to your uh, motion and, and we've done that and tax collectors in process of um, giving us all the final information that we should receive later this week and that's going well uh, Mr. Spurgeon came in and, and paid um, a large amount and we don't have the final dollar figure but I'll share that with you Part of that discussion, however, um, the total number of tax deed applications that we applied for was 400. Approximately 300 of those were from CHL. We still have tax deed applications that are owned by other individuals other than CHL that we want to get your permission to proceed with those tax deed applications and or hear um, your direction to not do so and then also Lots in Banyan Village specifically that are not by CHL. We want to have your permission to receive our tax seat applications. And that's what we are recommending. Second discussion. Dr. Commissioner Harris, saying about Commissioner Turner, yes, sir. So, so Ms. Davis, you, you guys want to perform an analysis and then go after more certificates. After additional certificates, correct, that are not that are not owned by CHL in the Banyan Village area, and we want to proceed with certificates that are already in process um, that were part of the initial 400 that are not CHL. Why just Banyan Village? As we um, and and we apply by statute. Um, automatically for lots that are over 5,000 in value. Okay, so that happens automatically. The clerk applies and, and that happens. By statute, if they're less than 5,000, then it comes to you and, and we ask your permission and, and you approve it. Or, and if you don't, then it just sits. Then it just sits and nothing happens. And so um, we have caught up. Is it safe to say we caught up? We've been working on that for, for many, many years um, in order to do that because in those areas, those were the areas in which they were growing. And now recognizing that Banyan is an area of growth um, at this time, it makes sense to go ahead and apply for those. It would not make sense to apply for something that was not marketable. And so we so it's not that we're going to go after we're going to go for a, a total of 400 lots not just the remaining of the ones that uh, chl had well we would go for the remaining so it's let's just say it's a hundred just okay. for conversation sake we would continue with those that are already in progress and then we would look at another batch so up, up of 300 more to get it up to 400 because that was your first batch Is left after that. There were 1,585 total in Banyan Village that were delinquent with us holding seven years of certificates. The HL was, I'm told, is about 12, under 1,200 or so. Most of them. But so that was <coughs> about 400. That's non CHL. About. We need to do the. Cousin? Mr. Chair. I. I um. Uh, so I don't I don't know if this is, pertains to the motion. So I have a motion and a second on the floor right now, right, to pursue with with acquisition. 
and, and an analysis. So I'm going to hold my discussion until after this part. Okay. Favor then? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, as it relates to Banyan Village, I have not been comfortable since our last meeting, and I've shared with Ms. Davis some of my, my um, frustration and concerns. Um, and I think a lot of it is just uh, from the process, I guess, more than anything, is what really has me uncomfortable. Um, I, I, you know, I, I wrote her a diatribe of, you know, I feel that we, we kind of acted out as haste. I think that we were, we were almost rewarding bad behavior because we had this carrot dangled out in front of us of a, of a multi-million dollar check and a guarantee. And um, what I would like to challenge us to do is make an item like that. I don't know if it's a dollar threshold or what is the, the, the tripping point, but I think that th there needs to be more research and more analysis performed and a stronger recommendation coming from our staff, specifically our county administrator, as it relates to leading us through that conversation. And, and Ms. Davis, I don't in any way, shape, or form want this to come off as I'm disappointed in you or any staff member for the decision that we made as a board. And I think that I am, I think that I, you know, if you go back and you look at what I stated, you know, oh, let's move forward, let's do this. You know, they're going to build X number of homes and all that stuff. And I still just think that it was, it was too big of a dollar threshold that I want to use this word. We forfeited, we potentially forfeited. And I don't know if I'm just talking about interest points or I routinely talk about the fact that I, you know, I hate when we ask staff to put hours or cost and energy into something and then we don't support it. And so I just think that from a, from a standpoint of procedure, I don't think in the future we should make a, you know, a decision of that magnitude out of a public comment section of the, of the board. That's what I guess I'm driving at. I don't, I don't think you ever have anybody that's got 1,200 lights, 1,500 lights to do that. I got I, I'm tired of looking at the trees out there for 40, 50 years, and I, I think it was a good deal for the county. Well, if I may, from that perspective, we were... recommend lot swaps from a staff perspective. And and we had been working uh, with, with Mr. Spurt for some time on that. Um, and that's where we were from a staff perspective. So we, so of course though, he could, as anyone can, come to a meeting and speak to you at the end of a meeting under public comment. Uh, and so that's where we were. And that's why it didn't come Staff recommendation perspective, um, because that that wasn't something we would probably have recommended. But that was something that he came to you and spoke to you, and it was a very um, unique circumstance um, as we all did agree on. Um, and, and paid everything up. Um, it was my understanding, the way on the final tally, if you will all his back taxes up on all his properties in the county as a result. Points, $4,747,693.94. 12,261 lots in Banyan. And I never dreamed we would get it. Well, <clears throat> I rode through Banyan Village today on the way in, and uh, Pike Electric has been out there this week um, putting in there's 36 poles up now. They got about another 30 to go. Um, progress is being made. I saw uh, Dr. Horton's lots. Uh, one of them, they already started bringing dirt in. I know they scraped them before the last meeting. Um, they've got four or five lots up there now. Houses with roofs on them. It's progress. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a lot quicker than your 40 to 50 years. But I think the momentum's there. Um, and I understand where you're coming from, uh, Carson. I mean, it, it was a big ask, but I think at the end of the day, I think we we acted on progress for an area, and you mentioned it. I watched the video again today, and you talked about 
infrastructure, 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 and it's happening because of, I believe, in my opinion, of somebody like Chuck Zwerk that sees a vision out there and has pushed, and he's going to make a lot of money on it, but he's put his money where his mouth is at, and uh, he's driven D.R. Horton to the table, and, and they've courted for a couple of years. I mean, he's been working on uh, on this fiber deal. The fiber's huge. I mean, he's had to go out and survey, paid to survey lots that he doesn't own to entice CenturyLink to come in, or CenturyLink Lumens now. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it was a big ask, but I think at the end of the day, I think we're going to reap the county is going to reap the benefits of this man's vision, and I think uh, I think we're heading the right direction, Banyan. I I want to echo. I don't I don't know what I don't know what is the tripping mechanism, but I I I don't feel good about it right now. I don't feel good about it. Hindsight, armchair quarterbacking, or Monday morning quarterbacking it, I would have not voted in favor of it. I would have just asked for a two-week reprieve, and I would have asked you to give us more background on where we're at on this. I don't think, you know, I don't think us forfeiting X on the certificates really is, is the difference in, in anything that you're seeing out there right now from occurring or not occurring. And I think that we, you know, we, we may allow the county to reap a bit of a more financial benefit than even what we are doing. I mean, let's, correct me if I'm wrong, but... The check that we're we're talking about, what was the number? Four point what? Four point seven four seven. Money owed to the county. Right. So it's I mean it's it's what you owe the county. It's it's not as if this guy rides in on a white horse and and you know hey guys this is what I'm giving to the county for for efforts rendered. No, and and I still take exception to. I almost I almost think that it was kind of slighted as if we as an entity have turned our back on any portion of the county and I take exception to that. So anyway, you know, we had a 15 to 20 minute presentation off of the public comment portion of the meeting. I understand it came because it had a large check attached to it. I think we I think we potentially set a bad precedent. We need to be mindful of that moving forward. You mentioned the fact that it's a unique setting because you don't have anybody that has X number of lots in that large of conglomerate. What I'm saying is is what happens when it's the person from Montura that hasn't paid or it's the person from Fort Deneau that hasn't paid or Pioneer that hasn't paid and they own five or six and, and you know, nobody has uh, uh, tried to go after it. Well, that's probably not going to happen because infrastructure is already in place. Somebody's going to acquire those and they're going to move forward with doing something with someone else's dirt. On this particular instance, it just, it just didn't sit well, still doesn't sit well. Glad we got a check for services that were given via the taxpayers of the county fronting it. Um, and, I, and I do think it's ultimately going to be a, uh, a movement in the right direction out there. But um, I, in the future, I will, I will be a little bit more boisterous in saying, let's pump the brakes on it, so to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, under public comment, Mr. Bosley. <clears throat> it's actually a topic that I was going to discuss tonight anyway, so I'm glad you're... Okay. Kicking it off, and we'll, we'll finish running with it. Fred Bosley. Um, on behalf of the Pioneer homeowners, and we have a lot more people moving in and complaining about not being able to communicate with their cell phones. And is there any any uh, way or, it, uh, or can you look into it, see if some type of a... Uh, booster could be mounted on the firehouse or put telephone poles in with a, with an antenna on it to increase our cell phone uh, service. We, we can absolutely, Mr. Chair, we can absolutely have that engagement with CenturyLink um, and, and with the individual providers themselves, Mr. Bosley. Um, not to be negative out the gate, Every time I've had that conversation with them, it just gets down to a pure volume standpoint, and they say you guys don't trip the threshold. Um, they've never, you know, they've never given me a solid answer, uh, but there's there's no doubt there's huge gaps in the system, so to speak. When I'm at the Pioneer Homeowners Association <coughs> building, I'm on one bar, or you know, LTE with nothing on there. So, yes, sir, we hear you, and uh, we we can definitely engage that from a county letterhead perspective. Well, uh, CenturyLink, I think is is 
uh, a hurting for they they cut down on the, the manpower, and if you have any tr problems, it took them two weeks to come out to see about static or getting the telephone service back over to the community center or to <clears throat> somebody's house. And two weeks is not acceptable. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Bosley, we have a lot of private businesses in, in, I know that side of the county that actually carry two bills a month. Be, and I'm, I'm talking about, you know, just like in the Hooker's Point area or in, in the city of Clouston. They carry both providers because the frequency of how much they're down. They, yes. They can't, you know, they, they can't have it and run a business. They have to have the redundancy so they can get Xfinity to respond to one, since really to come to the other and yes sir it's the same thing so it's not just an isolated incident to our constituents out out in the outlying areas it's it's right in the middle of town until our volume gets up we're going to suffer the ramifications of that we yeah. do know um, in the involvement with with our call you know my colleagues here in Florida Association of Counties and the small county coalition where Miss Bird has been a huge leader in the state on this discussion uh, we're doing everything in our power to to increase the footprint of fiber and and the ability for for these types of networks to exist and uh it's that you know it's that last mile concept and uh and we have a really good friend commissioner burroughs uh rural broadband is, is is his initiative for the state and uh he's he's up in okeechobee county and he's working this angle very hard as well and we're trying to see some movement and we feel that with our our partnership with the florida legislature we're going to see some action coming out of this next session very good yes sir and another thing if you and shane had been out driving around today did you take a look at the uh, post office? Yes, sir. So, you know, you saw Shane, you know, the banisters on the bottom. And then uh, he's Shane's in the process of uh, having lights quoted. Uh, or I don't know if it's Shane or Allen, but essentially they're going to have some lights. We're going to ask they get LEDs up under there to replace those in kind. And then um, and then they're, they're not going to let it out to bid. They're just going to go and chase some roofers down and um, make them come into the gator bait and give us their best number on uh, re-roofing that bad boy. We're just going to get quotes and turn it be done. Well, everybody's making some good comments about it, wherever the money come from to, to redo it. And uh, I just hope everybody will respect it and <coughs> not not do it as they have in the past. But And Mr. Bosley, I know that you're a huge mouthpiece out there. Shane is also actively engaged with the county attorney on trying to find out uh, it's it's not much different than the easement concept on Wheeler Road. You know we've been taking care of that for years. So how you know how how are we going to move forward with that? And Shane dropped the fee simple. Well, on the mailboxes in Ladika, you know we had that little turnaround in there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know Shane and his Road and Bridge Department have been maintaining that for generations. So now we're looking into the process of how we can actually put some some posts in the ground and get a roof over that that area as well yes it yeah. needs it over in ladika bad mr bosley you asked where the money was coming from a lot of people don't know this shane parker uh has a shoe box in the road <laughs> and uh well we've been digging for a shoe box. <laughs> we've been we've been digging in it a little bit i got to bring this up in a little bit <laughs> it's more money <laughs> well uh Shane's been doing a, a pretty good do, uh, job of patching our holy road, and uh, it's continually just with this water in the in the in the trucks that come coming in. Now I you're mean, speaking specifically to Henry Isles. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, uh, and and then on the east side of Tampa, some of those and I've, we've discussed it with Shane. Uh, some of those uh, on the on the side is given away, and that's that's down the road to, to be dug out and, and looked at. Shane, do you know that date? It's in, I know we're in the five-year work plan. I think it's two years away. I think it's two years away, Mr. Bosey, that Henry Isles will be redone. <clears throat> now, Shane, this isn't going to be from, like, just the Shell Station to halfway down to... All the way to Arcadia. Yeah, all the way to Arcadia. So it is going to be from Arcadia all the way back to the Shell Station. Okay, so they'll still be able to yell at us about the straightaway. Okay, all right. That's a... It's a first-class job up there to the the mailbox yes, area, sir. and uh, that that fellow did. You can re uh, recommend him anywhere doing county work, and also Tommy Vaughn and and Allen. As short as they are, on, Allen is on help. They're doing a very good job. They're keeping up the place over at the community center. 
Did you say Tommy Vaughn? <laughs> Did it? <laughs> I give Tommy credit where he deserves it. Every time I call him, he gets stuff done. So. <clears throat> That's the same one I know. <laughs> hey, new broom sweeps clean. I mean, what do you say? He must not be working <laughs> in your district. <laughs> hey, uh, Tommy, thanks for that sidewalk, by the way, in my <laughs> district. <laughs> Mr. Bosley, Mr. Chair, Mr. Bosley, Shane, we will have new sing sets before end of, of fiscal, most likely. Yeah. You said sometime it was ordered a long time ago. And then, um, it, and then, um, and then a re-roof on our pavilion as well. And then, Mr. Bosley, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to scrounge up and try to resurface our, our basketball court as well. So, yes, that is that that is a, a, a bad situation over for that. A lot of them come up there and play at night. They do. But they even, do. Even on the uh, summer camp or, or so that uh, that. that Ladies, it was a running it, so that they had a lot of them fall. You're looking for the ball or running and whatever, and then you hit a clump of, of grass or so coming up in those cracks. So they are they are doing a good job. We appreciate it, Mr. Bosley. Thank you. I know uh, Tommy does. He's he's grinning from ear to ear. So yeah, Miss Corbett. First, I apologize. I was under the impression that this was going to be on the agenda, and I would have more than three minutes. But I did send something. Mr. I think, Mr. Chair. Yes. I mean, I I don't know Carl Sford from Adams Housecat, but Miss Corbett has went up one side of me and down the other. Sometimes with love, and sometimes with directness. We we can waive the three minute rule. I mean, that I don't worry about that, Miss Corbett. Okay. Well, first of all, I wanted you to know my name is Linda Corbett, and I've lived in this area for over 20 years. My, hus my late husband, Colonel Thomas Corbett, was active in this community, and uh, his family has lived here for over eight generations. Uh, my mother-in-law was a member of the First Baptist Church here in LaBelle most of her life. Uh, I've been the wife of a Florida cracker, and I can never be considered a cracker because I wasn't born in Florida, but because I have lived in LaBelle for over 20 years now, I'm able to claim the title of a cracker crumb. <laughs> Regardless of uh, that, my part in this community, I feel we should all give back to our community for the betterment of all of us. I've also heard about the skating rink. I've heard about the movie theater, the big hotel on the river with the swimming pool, a large ballroom where music and dances were held, and the biggest and the best steaks in the state were served down there. Sadly, I saw the closing of Port LaBelle Inn and Golf Course many years ago. All those are gone. Nothing has replaced them. And in the last 20 to 30 years, our area has gone backwards in growth and activities for our residents. I hate hearing our county called the, one of the poorest in the state. That really bothers me. And I want to see us grow and increase support for our local businesses and community. I don't want us to turn into a tourist trap or a bedroom community for Fort Myers. I don't want our, uh, to lose our easygoing country lifestyle that we now have. I'm here today to ask for a helping hand, not a handout. I'm asking for you to approve a $25 increase in the West Rec yearly assessment for residents as the city of LaBelle already does and the same for all businesses in this area. That $25 for two years will allow the building of this nine-hole golf course and 60-unit eco-friendly eco RV park. Golf course will be eco-friendly too. The greens and the tees will be made, but the fairways will be, continue to be the pasture grass or uh, uh, bahia as they call it. This there now. It's not going to change. We won't move any trees. If we do have to move a tree, we will dig it up and move it somewhere else, but we're not taking out any trees, not cutting down any of them. It, I'm hoping that this golf course would be like what was presented a few years ago, um, a county 
city initiative and w with the input of the West Rec <coughs> Board too. Uh, it's, uh, if you'll notice, uh, it's 236 acres that the city owns out there between Forty Road and Cullings Wood Boulevard. 176 acres is what we're asking to build this. Uh, the result will be eco-friendly and increase the property values in that area. It would be self-sufficient in less than two years. It isn't going to be a drain on you every year because the money from the RV park fees will not only pay for the RV park and the golf course, whatever it doesn't make, but it should also be able to, if you'll read the figures that I had given you, help with the ballpark that's in that area that we want to build. It will not be a drain on the county. As you can see in two days on this little sheet I have, in two days I have sponsorships for five of these holes already to the tune of $27,000. And if you give me another week, I'll get all of them sponsored. Because the, the businesses in this community, as you see, are on board with this along with this, the people. Uh, we have uh, K&M Drug. We have Nesbitt Enterprises. We have A Action Power Equipment. I have several others that, that said that they really are interested. And if, if you can do this and help do this county city initiative, then they would definitely be on board. Uh, most of the, the 60 unit will bring in a, a $1,000 a month per unit. Right now, this is not competing with the other parks in the area because they are booked. If you wanted to take your RV and go for play golf and, and stay at an RV park in Hendry, in Glades, in DeSoto, in Lee County, you couldn't because they are all booked. Every, in, in Hendry County, every, if, if you look, the RV parks are booked. It is the thing of the future. Um, the pricing is on track with other RV parks, and we won't be competing with them. And with your help for the first two years, with the help of the, the city that's got, that is also on board, the resort will need no further assistance. And you can start assisting other recreational needs in this side of the county, which there are quite a few that could use some help. I personally feel that West Rec Board needs the funding from this increase after the resort is built. and they need upgrades to their ballparks and the lighting, and this would be something that would go forward and help them. Before you is a proposed idea worked on by my late husband and many other citizens, many of them you know. It's ready for a county city engineer and licensing area. I have talked to the city. I have talked to the Chamber of Commerce. I have talked to two of the rest, West Rec members. Bruce, I have sent this to you in uh, a, a letter to each one of you, and I'm hoping that you will approve a $25 increase. Um, I'm, not, I'm now asking you to think about this, to be heroes. Take a leap of faith that this is something we need we need to start doing this, not only in Hendry County, in uh, this side of the county, but eventually on the other side of the county. This is $25. $25. The cost of one breakfast at Big B for two senior citizens once a year. That's not a whole lot of money to ask. And I think the Increasing this will not affect the lives of many people. I don't think it would affect the lives of any of them, but as a senior citizen who is a widow of a 100% disabled veteran, I would be on board with doing this right now, and I'm hoping that you will consider this. And thank you for your time. If there's any questions you have I'll be, that I can answer, I'll try. Ms. Corbett. Did you meet with the city commission, and did they bless this? I have met with two of the city commissioners, 
and I have met with the outgoing mayor, and I have met with the ongoing incoming mayor. And yes, they are on board with this. If we can do the <coughs> county, city, because they can't do it by themselves. It's something we have to work together as, as a community as to, to do. As you know, the, the first 25 you was talking about, mm -hmm. okay, they can't use that for nothing except for a park. That first 25? Mm -hmm. So that would have to be a new 25 there and a new 25 here. For a park, that's the area that we're talking yeah, the, about. The 25 you're talking about has to go to the ball fields. This is in this property here that the city owns, uh, Forty Drive and Collingswood. Yeah, but it's it's mm -hmm. designated for the ballpark. Okay. So it'd have to be a new twenty-five dollar fee. Or adjust it. Or it'd have to be a new one with the city, uh, new one with the county. And it should be called a different name, like of course. A MSU, different designation. Yeah, designated for that particular part. And then somebody has to run it. Yes. Then the next thing I think everybody needs is uh, some kind of engineering and a correct price for the total thing. Yes. I have talked to Rock, and uh, we can, uh, I know that he is your engineer. He's, wor he's working in mm -hmm. the ballparks. And uh, he uh, says that it has merit, and we have to come before you before we can go any further. If you approve it, if you approve the money, you can have it sit there until we can get this done. But if we have to get all this done that you're saying, get the engineering. I do have uh, Mr. Douglas who does build golf courses, and he said he will build the basics. He will build the tee boxes, the greens. He will seed them. He will build, he will dig and put the sand in the sand boxes. He will uh, shell the road because we're not having any pavement because this is eco-friendly. We're, we're, it only has one dump station. So all these RVs have to come to that one dump station, which is in line with the septic, it's not a septic tank, but the sewer, city Port LaBelle sewer. So that's not a problem there. We're, we're, we need to get it going, and if you don't approve the funding, then it's going to be a couple years down the road, and all these people, you know, we, we're ready. We've been waiting for years. It didn't go through the first time, and I'm hoping that it will go through this time, if you will consider this, $25. So if you had a high number, what did you think the number would be to complete the whole thing? I gave it to you in the, in the package that I sent to you <coughs> last month. It was $230,000 to complete it. Mr. Douglas said that he would build all that that I told you about. He doesn't know no, uh, uh, sprinkler systems, no T flags or anything like that, but he would build a, the basic course for $110,000, which is about $80,000 less than any of the other bids that I got. Mr. Douglas, I checked him out. I went to the golf courses in Lake Placid and Sebring that he's done. I talked to the the golf course managers and the owners, and they said he does a real good job, uh, and he's local, and he's willing to do it to help this county, just like um, a action equipment here in town are willing to rent, find golf carts for us to rent, and rent them for cost plus 10%, and they will buy sponsor a $5,000 hole on this golf course. Now this is people who really care about the community. They're putting their money where their mouth is. And I'm hoping that you will definitely consider this. It's not like I'm asking for, for you to dip into your pockets and give me $250,000. So you're talking about the two year and you're gonna subtract that from the total cost 
was an RV and golf course. You'd have to come up with a balance to pay For 230000 you can build the golf course and shell and build these uh, uh, sites, which will be on shell. It's not going to be pavement. It'll be shell, and it'll have parking. And for that, we will have it started now. Even if the golf course isn't completely finished, we can get RV people that will stay in there because they want some place to stay. There's nowhere to stay. A thousand bucks a unit, sixty units times a thousand times eight to nine months. It's going to make some money. It's not like we're asking you to support a golf course that doesn't make money. Then, in your number, did you have employees in there? Yes, there were. I, I read where they were, but yes, it takes a lot of employees to take care of that. Well, it's nine holes. It's not eighteen holes. Yes. It's nine holes. You'll have a a manager, assistant manager. You'll have a, a bookkeeper who's also uh, works in the office. You know, uh, saying, "Okay, uh, you want to play how many holes? Okay, it's this much. We only take credit cards." Or you want to rent a lot for this many days or this long, here you pay with your credit card, that kind of person. And you'll have uh, a groundskeeper. And then you'll have three part-time groundskeepers. And you say, well, who's going to do most of the other stuff? Well, people who live in these RVs that come down here for eight months a year from Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, they... If you give them a discount off their rent, they will work 40 hours a week. What if they don't? How do you maintain the golf course? They will. What if? What if? What if not? They, I have never, I, I have gone to many, many golf courses. I have been, uh, I have known people who have worked at golf courses, and uh, that was their job. They, 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 come in and they say, all right, I want to work for this golf course. Uh, I'm going to be a camp host. I will come in and I will help maintain the grass. I'll do whatever is needed. I'll help get these RVs into their right spot and get them out. And for that, I want my, my lot rent for free. Okay, Ms. Corbett. Uh, board, what's your, uh, does anybody have discussion on this? Well, yeah, I just got a couple points, but I'll let Commissioner Harris go first. Anyway, like I said, a, a, a plan and a final dollar cost, including lawnmowers, yep. tractors, yep. sprinklers, irrigation pumps. Yep. We can't make any, I can't make a decision to get a total picture of everything. It's I thought a very that's good, what I gave you a, in that presentation. Yeah, I, yeah, but I don't think that's a total. I think what he's saying is, so you, you did a nice write-up, but I, you don't have any factual information to back it up bids. so you want me you want to not? go to mr douglas and say i want it you're writing your estimate in writing or i want a action uh equipment to give me uh an estimate in writing that you will do this you will do the golf carts and you will only be 10 percent above what the golf carts and is that what you're looking for yeah. you want yeah and uh did you figure irrigation in on it no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, for 110000 for him to do the basic, we'll have enough. And that includes shelling the, 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 the RV park. I mean, it's all done. All you have to do is water, which we have water. I, I talked to Rock, and he told there's water here. And we can hook into the existing septic system which is not a sewer it's a, a system which is at the rec center right here below it and we'll have just except for the office the bathrooms we have to hear have in the rv check-in area we'll have just that one place for septic i can get you if you want me to get estimates for the it needs to be complete Yes, ma'am. What he's, what he's talking about, uh, Ms. Corbett, is you're going to need an engineering cost. Right. That's going to blow your mind. It's going to be well over what dollars we're talking right now. Your and engineers you, couldn't do this? No, ma'am. Our engineers, engineers can't do that. No, ma'am. That's not his forte. He, he stays 
packed up right now trying to keep the county business in, in line. You've heard us talking tonight how we're backed up on that. Um, it, it's just there's, there's a whole lot of components that are missing in this. You've done a great job, but there's still a lot of things missing. So we really, um, you know, the board, if you have discussion on the board. I just, Mr. Okay. Chair, I mean, Ms. Corbett, I want to commend you for, for your passion on this. It's impressive. The packet that you sent to us had a lot of details. Um, even with that, just the nature of government, there's so many, there's so many other aspects that we have to take into consideration. I will tell you, just so I'm completely transparent, I've been the biggest anti-golf course human, arguably in Hendry County, in my existence on this board prior to getting elected, and still to this day. I will tell you this. Having said that, the 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 fact that you're showing an alternative revenue source to offset a nine-hole course is getting a m much more palatable from a standpoint of I, I see a much more palatable plan here than anything I've seen prior to. You know, we had some jack leg come in before and tell us, you know, the, if you if you build it, they will come. Um, you know, I don't remember what all snake oil was sold to us, but thank goodness the board didn't move forward and the West Rec board didn't move forward because I think we do have a fair amount of sense. Um, as it relates to your plan specifically, I think the numbers are a little light on 60 space RV spread and moral and then um, designing a nine hole course. But I don't, I don't think you're hearing a hard no from anybody right now. I think what we're simply saying is, is that in the, in the items that have been presented to us, our ability to say yes right now isn't there just yet. But I want to add another caveat to that. I've, I've always said I'm not going to raise the West Rec Recreation Assessment anymore until, until I see a succinct plan. I think that Romero and the team have done a good job of getting Rock on board and trying to zero in on that. You know, <clears throat> I've, always, I've always, the one thing that I've been chastised or one of the things I've been chastised on by the LaBelle community is their desire to have a large community pool somewhere. I've kind of always envisioned the 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 Forey Park, you know, as it upgrades come along, that's something that's there. But um, you know, I'm I'm all about listening. The one thing I would ask is that as your plan does take more um, more fruition, if it comes together, I think that the proper chain would be to go to your West Rec board and get their buy-in, and then as they buy into that, then it comes to us, and then we get the ability to say yes, we we agree wholeheartedly with uh, raising that assessment or no, it just doesn't meet the merit. And then the final thing that I'm going to say is, is that I think that this has such power to it because of the people that I've heard in this community and their desire to have a golf course. So once again, I want to reiterate, I'm not a hard no right now, but I sound like a politician saying, just give me more information. You know, I'm going to say, you want to hear something great? I'm not saying, oh, well, legal can't say this. And, you know, it's a liability issue. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is I think you have more than I've ever seen before that justifies us having a deeper conversation. And I want to hear from the City of LaBelle Commission, and I would love for this to be a catalyst that makes us all get in the room together, the City of LaBelle Commission, the Henry County Commission, if they feel that this meets the merit, via they being the West Rec Board saying, yep, we need to all get together and chit-chat about this some more. You know? Okay. Ms. Ms. Corbin, we just spent 200, well, we just, we just cleared up $281,000 from the Tourism Development Council to go towards our rodeo grounds over here. And it's not just our rodeo grounds, it's the LaBelle Youth Livestock Area. There's, you know, there's a sewer aspect to that, but there's a lot of upgrade that's going on over there. Um, you know, I think we need to listen to every plan that's out there. And one that, one that cr tries to do its best to create a cross-neutral situation while allowing people to recreate, especially people, um, I hope I'm not age discriminating right now, but let's be honest, it's, a, yeah. it's an older person's sport. You know, this is something that you can, you can play throughout your entire lifespan. You ain't going to get on a bull and go ride it. You ain't even going to get on a horse no, and go on a bear I'm power, not. You know, So we got to take them all into consideration. And these people that are in this RV park, that's uh, 60 units. That's 120 plus mainly senior citizens who spend money. They're not a drain on your medical system. They're not a drain. They're not going to go out and have wild parties. I mean, they're a cash cow. Yeah. And, so, uh, and we got to attract them. I will get back with you in the very near future. I have talked to uh, 
a couple of the people on the rec board, but we do need to get into more detail because if you do approve the $25, I hope you want earmark it for one thing. Just approve it, and then when people like me or Romero come before you with a proposition, you can use that money for that instead of saying, oh, no, it's already earmarked for this. We can't use it for anything else. Well, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you complete transparency. I've worked with kids for 30-plus years. My main goal is to see that baseball park finished. I'll be honest with you, um, golf courses are going under everywhere. Speaking to Bonita Bay, I asked Bonita Bay about golf courses after I got this from you again, the same mm -hmm. thing they told me. It's just, it's not going to make it in LaBelle. A nine hole, 18, 27, at this point, it's just not going to make it. So for me to sit here and tell you that, uh, I'm just going to be honest with you, I would love to see a pool here for our kids. Our kids have nothing. I know. They, they don't have a splash park. They have a splash park in Moorhaven. It's got an itty bitty park with a splash park in it. I get beat up all the time about it. Again, I, I still work with kids today. So for me to sit here and say that I could actually move forward without it finishing, completing that park out there and having the, the lights and the kids playing baseball on it, I'll just be honest. I'm on the West Rec board. Yeah. And so, I'll, I'll be uh, honest with you about it. For me right now, I would, I would say no. Okay, so uh, when you get the ball fields done, which will never really generate any income, no, ma'am, but it fills a lot of children's lives. Yes, kids but there are people a dollar besides that. children in this community, and I'm hoping that once we get those parks done, you'll think about others that don't play ball, and some of the kids that don't play ball, what of them that want to teach them how to play golf so they can get a scholarship and be the next Tiger Woods? We've got an amazing golf team at the high school yeah and where you go glades county they go there and they go to cliston yeah i mean the reality is the the, the oxbow beautiful amazing course played it for years mm -hmm. as soon as the home started selling the hot it closed yeah but it wasn't because they weren't making any money it was because that man had a, a financial problem up north That's and he right. needed the money here so that he could get his business up north out of trouble. But still, it doesn't make, I'm, I'm not saying that this golf course is going to make money. I'm saying it, if at the best, it'll break even. But if this RV park can not only pay for it and itself and give money to this ballpark, if you'll know the figures, you're going to get, uh, after the first two years when it is built, you're going to get about fifty to $75,000 profit every year, which will be plowed back into recreation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the people that I'm talking with and, unfortunately, to, the, to these people who want to sponsor this whole and see if they would be willing to put their money up first so that we can go get the engineering and I can go in and get the estimates from the people that you want to show that I got it in writing. This man said he will do it for this. This man said he will do it for this. Add them up. There's your park. And come back to you very soon. Well, I understand. I appreciate your passion. More people should be passionate about the things they go after. I just, but I just want to be completely transparent as well. Yeah, so. I know. I, I'm not the. I'm. I'm going to tell you the same thing today. I'll tell you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, I love children. Mine are all grown. I'm never going to play sports again. I tried playing softball, pulled them up, Me never either. do it again. But that my my grandchildren, my children's grandchildren. And so anyhow, we we thank you uh, for taking the time to put this together. It was an excellent presentation that you sent us. I read that. It's been, uh, what, a month ago you said that, or three to four I weeks did. at least. That's why I was hoping it would be on the agenda, but somehow it got... Well, all happened. the time and effort you put into this, thank you. Um, you, you, did, you did a very good job. Thank you very much. Ms. Corbett, I, I usually don't defend staff, but I will tell you this. I've not known them to not put something on the agenda that has been requested, but the process for getting something on the agenda is a bit uh, odd from time to time. So just yeah. in the future... I guarantee you, if you walk into the building there and ask Ms. Davis to, you know, I'd like to make this agenda item, I guarantee you they'll, they'll lickety split, they'll make that happen. So, okay. yes, ma'am. Right. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Um, anyone else in the public like to address the board before we close? Mr. Parker? Uh oh, we got a couple of them. You didn't, yeah, okay, sorry, I, I, I forgot you. Sorry, I'm
I'll make it quick, Chairman. For the record, Shane Parker, I emailed you a change order number two with Strickler Brothers Underground for Port LaBelle yes. Utility System. Yes, motion to approve the change order presented for Strickler Brothers. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Last one I have, I didn't email you, but I handed it out. This is for the Four Corners MSBU. We've got plans done. We got the grant. We're trying to answer all the, um, I can't think, title based questions, but we're getting ready to go out to bid. I didn't modify the plans because we don't have enough grant funding to build what was permitted. So I need to modify the plans, but while I'm here, I'm also asking for post design services for bidding assistance, answering the questions, answering contractors' questions. So I don't have to come back before you. And that's for a not to exceed amount of $100,000. So moved. Second. Uh, how, how, many, how much longer, Shane? Um, well, we're hoping to issue the RFQ for CEI services here in the next month or so. And just to clarify, that's for um, staff to prepare the STA for marked review, subject to his approval for the chairman to execute and vice chairman in absence and a budget amendment. As we have motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Again, anyone of the public like to address the board? Um, business by district? I'm good. Good. Mr. Harris? I think uh, just one question, Jennifer. Our uh, new program, capped outlay, do we have air conditioners in that? Fire courthouse that's going to redo the whole. We have the money for that yet. If they're broke down all the time, what can? Got to go through the process and find out exactly how much it's going to be. It's going to be a very large amount of dollars. Yeah, I know. Talked with Commissioner Wills earlier today about it just to get his historical knowledge because he himself has worked on quite a bit over the years. And I just to tag that real quick, I, I met with the contractor today. Actually, they were here. They got the unit going. It was around two o'clock or so. That's really it's kind of muggy still. Um, they're saying end of September for four parts. Um, and I did ask them if they could start, and this is this is the field tech who's probably one of the better ones we've had in many years. I've dealt with him for 20 plus years myself. Um, he's going to start putting some together some some specs that we can spec out to uh, go out to bid with. But uh, what, what firm is looking it? At, sir? What firm is it? Uh, he's with Train. He's with Southwest Florida Train. Uh, but it doesn't. It, the specs he's going to give us, he's given to those those out of a courtesy. We can spec that with anything. Uh, we have a York up there right now. Um, historically, that York's been a headache since it sat down on the building. Uh, within the first two months, it was broke down. So um, not not pushing anything. Uh, I like train. We got a train at the health department. We got one at the EOC. We don't have as many problems by far. But with that being said, the unit we're looking at will be a self-contained unit. It'll have all the pumps, compressors, fans built into a unit. And at, at that point, half the unit's down, we still have AC. Um, we'll still have AC to whereas right now when the unit's down, you're down. So just that's just kind of a heads up on that where we're at. Mr. Turner? We don't do anything that doesn't have redundancy now. You know, with the exception of an air compressor on our dive boat, and we're working to get redundancy on that, but we do have redundancy on the back of our, our divers. So we just have redundancy on everyone today. Um, I um, was being nosy a few weeks ago. It's probably been longer than that now. And I walked across to the old um, school board building, which is the historic courthouse. And I, Ms. Davis, I don't know what your plans are. Um, I don't know what our thoughts are. Uh, but boy, we got some square footage that could be utilized. Um, when I went through the old chambers where the school board met, you know, some of the roof tiles have been removed. And wow, what a what a facility that could be. So. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of spending money, but at the same time, um, if, if we have square footage that's available, we're not leasing anything now. We, we got out of all of our leases. If anything, we're leasing back. So, I mean, you know, I, I just think that with the way of the world as it is right now, with the security of this facility, with, you know, with our ability to go after grant dollars, and I don't think that that pigeonholes us into you have to use that as a county facility I think that we could we could potentially have a, a 
a financial gain to, to look at over there as long as we grant that out and uh, and make sure that it's uh, something that you know we're not coming out of pocket uh, to refurbish uh, but boy it's it's old you know I mean the, it's, it's artificial turf in there on your carpet you know and all that stuff and <laughs> we don't have a lot of you know we don't have a lot of bells and whistles here in Indian County but um that could just that could really be a a fine building to have from a commercial aspect standpoint so just something to consider Are you getting funding for that Jennifer for the next round of funding for the inside okay finally got the outside the roof the clock works and we have our chimes in the clock as well right yeah that's that's pretty sharp so I just think it's one of those ones we don't need to be operating out of haste but at the same time I think we need to have a vision as we move forward on that so um, and then uh, just good discussion from the board tonight um, and I appreciate us letting everybody have the ability, especially when it's a local like that, that uh, wants to bring something to our attention. And um, that's it in a nutshell, Mr. Chair. I get I get, get in trouble with the clock all the time when it gets two minutes off. They, they start calling me. The clock's not ringing at the right time. I tell them, check your phone. Um, uh, real quick, um, the last meeting we discussed lawnmowers and the vendor that we've been dealing with, berries. We've been dealing with them for almost 28 years now called me and wanted to know why we dropped them as a vendor. Um, I told him we didn't drop them as a vendor. Um, well, we, we really need to consider the folks that take care of us. They've been with us, like I said, at least 28 years they've been a vendor. So just to keep in consideration here, when someone takes care of you that long, you don't just throw them down. I know the young man Dustin over in Moorhaven, and they, they, I have nothing bad to say about him, like I said before. But again, 28 years we had a vendor. And now this vendor all of a sudden is kicked to the curb. So, um, is that all he does? Is that all he does with us? Is just lawnmowers? Well, no, no. Well, lawnmowers, parts, weed eaters, blowers. Now, but now we have been buying a lot of that with Dustin as well, wow. which is wolves. For, I'm sorry, I should have said wolves. I apologize. I know the young man. He's a good young man. But the fact is, we, we what we do is we've been buying from him for everything in Cluiston, and we've been buying our blades from him. He does a really good job on blades and everything else. For the stuff in LaBelle, we was buying the mowers from Berries. We'd buy one from there. We'd buy one from Dustin. We'd buy one from Steve. And we were going back and forth. So just to keep in mind, just something that, and like I said, personally, I worked with him for 20 years. I worked with him personally for 20 years buying parts. Their service is untouchable. I'll say that. So again, I just wanted to say tonight that I'm just not comfortable throwing a vendor down that's been that, that loyal to Hendry County. So I'd, I'd ask you guys to consider that. When it comes up time to buy equipment, um, I don't want to. I don't want to put anyone out. Dustin as well. So just going forward, I would ask that we look at every bit of that across the board. Not someone that just come in brand new, but someone that's been around. I'd like to see us. I'd like to see us give them the opportunity to. It's state contract pricing, and and you guys, you guys state contract pricing. You don't make money off of that. They get credits off of what they sell. Is what they get. So if they sell X amount of mowers, they get X amount of credits. Weed eaters, blowers, whatever the case may be. So. That's all I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, Shane, uh, you and Margaret, I appreciate all that you've done in Willard States and everything you got going. Y'all done an amazing job. Um, Katie, I, I didn't say you this morning. I apologize when I, didn't, when I acknowledged everyone. I didn't acknowledge you, so please accept my apology for that. Uh, you sat down with a couple this morning, and that, that lady called me later. She was just extremely happy that everything's done. And sometimes it's the little things. You know, it's a matter of just sitting down looking across the table at someone. So thank you all for that. Um, the the, the Wi-Fi and stuff, Carl, this is a question you can talk with Ryan about. Out in Felder for a community meeting, Wi-Fi is horrible in the building. You walk up, you walk next to the to the unit, you got Wi-Fi, two bars. You walk halfway down the building, you have nothing. You go, <laughs> so uh, if we could if we could check that, I don't know, Mr. Bowe, that's the reason I said earlier, I don't know what it is in the Pioneer Community Center. I know we've put Wi-Fi in our buildings, but if we could please check that so they, they have connectivity there. If we go to do a meeting there, we're going to need it. We're well, going to need Wi-Fi. I'd like to go a step further, Mr. Chair. I'd, I'd like to check. I'd like to ask that y'all check all of our facilities. You know what I mean? Not not just the community center, but look at the firehouse. Look at everything, because it, it's it's the way business is conducted in 2021. It's not a luxury anymore. It's a necessity. And so, yes, sir. So if you could please check that, I'd appreciate it. And Montour, that's all I have. Montour comes up. Montour, absolutely. Um, Mr. Chair, to to the point, I wanted to ask. The the uh, bids came back. It was four 
lawnmowers, I believe it was. I'm not trying to belabor the point. I don't no, disagree no. with you. Perfect. Service, you, you can't put a price tag on service. That's right. I have not bought a number of pieces of equipment and or trucks from dealers who actually beat the bottom line number, but I know that when I call up X entity, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna push me to the front of the line. They're gonna make that happen for us. Um, with that being said, though, state contract pricing, um, or, or you're saying that they didn't have the ability to adjust their number? State contract pricing. They they both give a state contract price. It's identical. The numbers are identical. If you looked at the bids, they're identical. It seems un-American. I mean, so so nobody has any more juice in there. They're they're the mandated. Contract. Yes, sir. On the state contract pricing, it is what it is. Well, they lose. I, I, guess I, I, say. I don't agree with that. I'm dying to look into this more. Because I'm going to tell you right now, my sales reps tell me all the time, this is the best I can do. And I say, great. I'm going with Gray Bar. And then suddenly they're able to find 5%. And, 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 and you know, my, my dad and I, it's one of the biggest arguments we have. If Doyle likes you, <laughs> he doesn't care what the number is sometimes. And he'll actually buy presents for sales reps. And, and you know, I'm like, hey, what are you talking about right now? We're not buying this man a Benelli shotgun because he sold his wire really well and, and, it, and it showed up on the truck like it's supposed to do. You know, I don't, that's his job. And, and we just bought $180,000 worth of wire for this bridge. So, you know, they need to, they need to you know, deal with us. And it's, I love that you're having this. I love the fact that, that you spoke your mind and said 28 years, I, I, I love that. And I'm going to err on the side of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to develop that new guy that's coming on and, and then challenge our staff to go after those numbers. Because I don't, I don't like calling y'all. I don't ever call y'all. But I was almost calling, why is this number $10,296 or whatever it was, but it was all the exact same. I said, this is, this is not America. This is, this is so... Oh, I take contract price. I think I can help you out for next time. <laughs> First of all, we do use Barry and Wuss, Road and Bridge, East Side, West Side, where it's closest. Right. I usually buy lawnmowers in multiple. I'll do Solomon split the baby. Buy two from Wuss, two from Barry's. I don't like that. I, but I like getting the best long, <laughs> But as long as the, whoever has the cheapest price, that's a contract price, and it was all the same. So you could flip a you can flip a quarter either way. It was the same price. Why is that? I, I, I don't know. I can't speak for them. We didn't ask them to. Somebody needs to go to Wolf. Their price is they're winning. Contract I mean, no, price Skag. Is Somebody needs to go to Skag and just cut out the middleman. This is absurd. I'm sorry, but that's the best I can do. Well, you you cut out the middleman, you buy from Orlando or Sarasota, and you have change. nothing. Yeah. And they are here the whole thing. You, and it's good. I'm, I love this conversation. If you got a, a, someone that's been servicing you for 20 years, and you said... You call them up and they make it happen like that. I do. You're going to stay with them. I'm going to put a premium on it. Yes, 28 sir. years I've been dealing with these people. They make put it happen like that. It. Don't put a premium on don't it. Don't disagree with it. Yes, sir. Don't yeah. they do so. stuff that the other ones can't they, they, The service is different. They have one service guy in Moorhaven. Dustin works by himself. He has Billy there that runs the desk. I know them both personally. Love them to death. But I do know that there's six guys over there that when I drop a mower off, I haven't gotten out of Hendry County, out of Lee County, and they called me and said, I uh, met your mower's ready. I've gone back and picked it up and brought it back and put it in production that day. So, and again, I'm not there's nothing negative about Dustin. Don't don't think that at all because the kid's a good kid. It's nothing like that at all. It's just good business to me. If we had four mowers, two from there, two from there, I'm happy at Christmas and he'll get a card. I got anything else? You want? You're good. Meet is adjourned. <laughs>